what's good, misfit, murder, have gang. This is my dumb advice. What it is, misfit, murder, have gang. This is my dumb advice. Bow. What's good with you? We in the building. What's up? What up, y'all, man? How y'all feeling? How y'all doing? We already know we in the building today. Oh, it's lit today. It's going down. What up in the chat, everybody? How y'all doing? So tonight we got a special show for y'all, man. We got the boy Method Man in the motherfucking building. Wait, I don't even know if I did that right. The 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 man himself, B Wu Tang, ain't nothing to fuck with. Uh, legend himself, man. I definitely grew up off this guy's music. Uh, Wu Tang was a huge part of the reason why I rap. Uh, huge part of the reason why I do what I do, man. Um, a huge, heavy Wu Tang influence. Um, them Onyx. There was just uh, some groups that I really was in love with. You know, I had met. Met the man on my expert opinion, and uh, the battle rap community has been familiar with him as well because he has supported the battle rap community tremendously. He even was a judge for the Ultimate Madness tournament, and he is in tune, you know what I'm saying? Like, we know a lot of industry cats and, like, people who make music or whatever and, like, the real industry people, Drake and all that, who we, we getting to know now. But I feel like Method Man was fucking with Battle Rap when none of the industry dudes were publicly fucking with Battle Rap. So, you know, I definitely want to give kudos to him. But before we get into that, I do want to pay some respects and, and show some love to Hitman and Cinnamon. Um, today we heard of an unfortunate event uh, where... Their home was burglarized and she was shot. You know, I don't know the details, but I can't imagine what he's going through at the moment. So I want to send blessings to him and his family, her and her family. And um, this is something you don't ever want to see happen to anyone, let alone somebody in the battle rap community. Uh, especially someone like Hitman, who is always has a positive insight Always a positive dude every time you see him. Um, and, you know, it's just shit is not cool. You know what I mean? And it's like I couldn't imagine having to deal with my shorty being hurt in that kind of way. And it's just something that you wake up and you don't know something like that is, is possible to happen to you. But um, everybody be safe out there. There's all types of, like, creeps out there and weirdo people who – you know, just just are envious of the things you have and want what you have, and they will go to the extreme um, circumstances in order to get it. So, yo, blessings, everybody. I hope, you know, I hope she is good, and we, you know, pray for them. You know what I mean? I know he was on social media. He asked that you guys give prayers to his family. So, you know, if, if you guys... Support hit me and support if you support just human beings, man. Hold them down 100%. Make sure we are good. Meth, what up? Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, the one and only method man in the motherfucking building. What's happening? Wagwan, what it is? Wagwan, Wagwan, my you. <laughs> That's how me and Mav greet each other every day. It's hilarious. <laughs> Mav love that shit, though. Mav is a motherfucking, you know, he's a Caribbean kid. Caribbean. <laughs> a smart one, too. Caribbean kid. A smart one. That's where he get all that drive from. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Uh, I love Mav. Man, I texted him this morning and was like, bl I said some long-ass message. He was like, <laughs> same to you. You good? <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious, but man, thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate it for real. Um, I know you were just in the studio with Core working on some music. Uh, what, 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 what y'all working on? Well, Core owed me a favor. Ooh. No, he owed me a couple of favors. Nice. <laughs> well, we owe each other. We owe each other favors, so we do favors for each other here and there. Plus, <clears throat> y'all family, so you know he's a good dude. So, um. 
an opportunity presented itself where I can get, you know, some of the stuff that I gave him back. I needed like a hook. Nice. You know, and he's at the meth lab all the time and shit. So he always on deck for whatever, man. Love core. Got you. No, I mean, uh, he's, uh, you know, we always think about it. And I, I talk to him all the time. Like, we were such huge fans. And, like, just to, um, you know, be in a place where you can be on the track with each other is just it's some full circle shit, man. Um, well, I'm accessible. That's why. I'm very accessible. Ask anybody. <laughs> you know, there's a stigma about people that been in the game this long or or in the game or at the peak of their game or however the fuck you look at it, celebrities on the whole. Right. People feel like they're, they're, they don't have a lot of access to them. They don't really. Right, right. But you know, you know the right people, people click. Yeah, things happen. Don't. Um, I was just talking to everybody. Obviously, you you are heavy in the battle rap community, right? Um, you even judged the ultimate madness situation. Um, how right, did that come mad. about? They still mad. They still yeah, mad. That's a fact. They still mad at you. <laughs> well, you know what it was. Let me tell you exactly what it was. Um, I got a call. Not even. It was kind of like last minute. Right. Y'all want to uh, judge a battle, and me, always wanting to show support for the game. You know what I mean. And we were going through a quarantine at the time. Right. I agreed to it. But in the same breath, the first battle, I had to shoot a video with Conway, the machine, for that Lemon Squeeze song. Mm. So there was points during the battle where I don't know if it was old girl or maybe Goods, one of them. When you don't mute your mic, it pick up all the background sound. Okay, so true. they could hear the battle, but I couldn't hear it because of their background noise that was going on. The mm. So for me, it was like, well, what the fuck I'm going to do here? You know, so I'm going to keep it a buck. But if I got to pick somebody, blah, blah, blah. People still going to find something wrong with that statement too. But long story short, I was actually shooting the video and I took time out of my schedule for nothing right. to do that battle, not just for the culture, but for Smack, you know what I mean? Love that dude for Beasley and uh, P who called me, you know what I'm saying? So it, it, was, it was like, I'm going to do this out of love and they can't say shit because that next battle, I was on it and I was in the motherfucking gym at the time. Yeah, that's a fact. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so stop playing with me, battle rap. You know what? <laughs> Um, all the battle rap um, artists, they love the fans, but they hate the motherfuckers at the same time, man. It's a love-hate relationship, and I understand that now. Yo, for real. I mean, yo, the fans can murder you one day, but will love you the next day. It is real different on this side of town. I, I mean, I don't know if it's different, because every time I tell people that, they always say that's just fans in general. But obviously, our fans are battle rap fans, so that's what I have experience with. You would have Not experience really, with we both. We got guys that what get in the fights over Wu Tang. Right. We right. got people that get in the straight fights over Wu Tang, and I'm not saying people don't get in the fights over battle rap, but I'm talking about the number of people. Right. You know. Uh, shout out to um, speaking of battle rap in, in real life. Shout out to uh, Hitman Holler. You know what I mean? Yes. Everybody. You know, if you pray, uh, keep that in your mind, keep that in your heart. For his ways, you know what I'm saying. That should never happen to anybody. Mm -hmm. Fucked up world we live in, man. Yo, Hollow. I mean, Hitman, we there for you, brother. Facts. Everybody pull. Everybody wants your wish to pull through, and we want you to heal from this and get better. That's a fact. Yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, I just spoke about it right before you go on. That's something that you would not wake up thinking that's gonna happen, and let alone somebody that's close to you, or just just like I don't know. It's just wicked, man. How shit just happens. Nobody deserves that. Nobody shit deserves at all. that shit. Fuck. Yeah. What your lyrics talking about? How many niggas you done this, that, and the third? That's his girl right there. Facts. That's their place of residence where they lay their heads at. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just grateful that he ain't have his kid there or his kids there. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. But it's still a bad situation, man. Nobody deserved that shit. Right. That's a fact. Um. Yeah. And I, I, I wish him and his family all blessings, man. All blessings his way, a hundred percent. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Um, and, you know, he just uh, he just had a battle, you know, he, he he be in good space, you know, he just been doing really well for himself. And it's just, you know, I just think, you know, envious people, shit happens, you know, 
Yeah, it definitely happens. But what I can't understand is, you know, battle rap fans, I get it, you know, it's from the grain, this, that, and the third, but y'all can't expect these guys to battle rap all the way into their fifties. That'd be the punchline in a lot of battles and shit. Niggas in fifties still battle you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So when they progress and they move on to something bigger, but it's still promoting this genre. Why is it that people want to hate when they come back? Not everybody, but it's a select few that's mm-hmm. like, nah, you don't went over there and mess with blah, blah, blah. You can't come back here. Or if you go to a certain league and it's like, yeah, you was over. It's like dudes being in jail and, and maybe you was in PC. Mm-hmm. They made you go to PC or whatever and shit, whatever, whatever. And all these other, other dudes was, you know, they gym pop. They, they, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's like, Nah, you wasn't jailing, nigga, unless you was over here with us. What? We all locked up. What the fuck are you right. talking about? That's a fact. What do you mean, nigga? I get it. I know, you know, the house is whatever it is, whatever, whatever. But, nigga, at the end of the day, we all locked up. Mm-hmm. That's why I never understood how I get niggas be happy about them visits, but I never understood how you can smile in the jail picture. Like, today was a good day. You know what I mean? Like, today was a good day, nigga. Nah. It wasn't. It wasn't. And I think that's how the message gets misconstrued sometimes. The brothers, you know, try and carry that like a badge of honor. That's not. Mm-hmm. You got caught, nigga. You got caught. That's a it's fact. That's a badge of honor. Even in battle, in battle lyrics, like um, when people be like, "Yeah, you know, I did time. Ah, 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 ah. You ain't do time. You know, I was just like, man, you know, I ain't trying to do no time. <laughs> you, know, like, you can have that. You can have that. Me neither. That's all. And the niggas know. that's in there. Don't want to be doing that. Correct. Part. Correct. Really? That's a fact. Anybody who's been in jail long enough do not really want to promote that shit. They be like, look, I ain't with it. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Oh, man. Uh, you, you ever did a, a long period of time in jail? I ain't been to jail. Good. The most I did in jail was uh, 12 hours, I think. 12, 14, maybe 16 hours. I ain't like that shit either. Yeah, that's a fact. My problem with jail is I can't do what the fuck I want to do when right. I want to do it. That's my biggest problem. That's a fact. You know? I just but knew it was I always, with that. I mean, it was always little shit. You know, where I get caught with a little weed and shit. Um, as I got older, the charges got a little bit more serious, you know, especially when you're hustling. Right. But for some reason, you know, you never had to, you know, Go behind that wall, that you know them, them felony offenders. You did. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, I, I shit. I got my I got my first felony, and I knew at that moment I never wanted to do this again. <laughs> I was no, like, I'm you know right. what? I'm good. It's not for me. Right. <laughs> Y'all can have that. <laughs> Let me go get a job. The smell. <laughs> you can't even describe the smell of jail. It's like. You, yeah, you when could, we but right here, <laughs> it's like. Y'all, when we went, Word is bone. We went to Rikers when Dirty was locked up there. Mm. And um, we performed. Yo, that was some slick shit because I had a visitor pass on and shit, right? Somebody stole that bitch. I don't know how they did that shit, but they stole it. What? And we had to sit there after the show. We had to sit in Rikers for an additional, like, hour and a half until they found the shit. <laughs> they thought they, they, they had something to do with it? Huh? They thought y'all had something to do with it? Nah, it was like I had a tag. You had to wear. You got to wear the visitor pass. You got to wear the tag out. Right. So me performing, the shit came off, or somebody uh... snatched the bitch or something. Because I did get a little close to the crowd and shit. Right. And it was like, yeah, somebody caught me for that pass, man. I don't know, who got it, but they didn't get out that day. They was like, but I met the man. Yeah. Look. Yep. Let yeah. Me get out. <laughs> that part. That part. Visitor. Oh lord. But yeah, we went to. We went in there to perform. You know, when Dirty was there, and I swear, Lord, like, once you get inside, you smell that shit, it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's what it is. Yes, sir. Um, how, how does one perform there? Like, how did y'all get to perform down there? That's dope. I have no idea, but it was more or less like, yo, y'all perform that right here. Okay. You know? Nice. <laughs> I want to see Dirty anyway and shit, you dig? So, right. we get up in there, and, um... They put us in like a little classroom or some shit there to hold us for a minute. Mm-hmm. Everybody passed, whatever to get through. And we were right in the yard. Wasn't no stage, nothing. And they had a little speaker set up and shit, a little microphone and shit. We did it for the prison right. inmates. We did that for the inmates. Facts. You know they was Straight loving up. that shit. Like, they what? enjoyed that Let's shit. Go. I think they did. 
I yes. think they did. I think the adolescents chilled out that day because they right. be the ones in there doing all that cutting and ripping and running. <laughs> it was like, let's go, let's get it. <laughs> yeah, and it was interesting, man. You know, because I didn't really see it in Dirty's face, but I could only imagine how he felt when we left and he mm. had to stay. You know. Right. And contrary to what people think, brothers did go see Dirty in jail. Not at Rikers when he was in Kings County. Me and Rizza personally Dope. went up there to see old Dirty in jail. So, Ray, R.I.P., man. Again, I, I couldn't imagine what you guys are going through after that, something like that. You know what I mean? Somebody you with all the time, your brother. You know what I mean? It's like losing your moms or your pops and shit. I don't care. Nobody can't dispute that for me because that's how I felt about Dirty, like real blood family, you know? That shit hurt. It hurt. And then you all got all the what ifs or wonder ifs. I wonder if Dirty was here. Or what if Dirty was here? What if what if what would what would, what if Dirty had a an IG or a Twitter? What would that look like? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> be crazy. No, that, that would be fun actually. I would, would love be to be following him on social media. <laughs> right? <laughs> I would love it. Um oh man. The um, what about uh? Do you keep a relationship with his son as as much um as as young him, dirty like, be on the road with us? He tours with us because he um he does his parts right. Mhm. Mm yeah, he I, I've does. seen a couple. I've seen a couple joints where he did his part. And, it's hell um, because young dirty is a star. Ain't got a rhyme. Ain't even got a rhyme. Well, he yeah, he's a star. Carry yourself like a star. He's like a person like just full of a burst of energy personality you know he get up there with us he make us look like old men <laughs> he definitely do he you gotta keep up with him yeah yeah just like his daddy though man just like his father man and his father and trust me that fact he don't he don't miss that fact at all you know you know he is father's son trust me shit i mean he makes music of his own I haven't heard any, okay. but I know he's from a very musical family. His uncle, his right. uncle did the uh, guitar on uh, the Riddler, the Riddler song. Uh. That was Dirty's brother did that with uh, RZA and uh, Mama Cherry. They mom, I mean, his grandmother is is music. Period. Right. Mama Cherry is music. You know, Dirty had a great, great musical upbringing, man. So he got it in him. Yeah, he do. Yeah, he do. Um. The, I was just talking um, to a couple friends of mine about the uh, Hulu series on. Um, yeah. How much input did you guys have on that? Like, I know RZA produced it, right? Yeah. Um, but how much did each individual have on the the show? I can only speak for myself. Uh huh. And I actually sat down with Alex, the writer. Okay. And we went over things here and there. You know, I told him a little history about myself. But at the end of the day, creative control is what it is. And that's in RZA's bag. And for the show that RZA wanted to make, mm -hmm. art couldn't fully imitate life. Mm. So that word based, whenever you see that in front of a biography or a movie mm. that they claim is a true story, if it says based, that's where you should be wary at. But I love what he's doing with it. He's a, He actually made our lives or a figment of our lives into a TV show. It's interesting. Right. Right, right, Very right. interesting. So a lot of it, like, it's not, a, it's it's based roughly on, like, the idea. So most of the parts is not, well, every time I see based, like, I, like, like you said, I know it's not completely true. But then we always wonder, well, what was true? How much of it was true? Like, oh, was that true? Like, yeah. That's, but that's the same thing we, we we want, like, the feds to think. Like, what is true and what ain't true. You understand? You know, some of these things that happen are, you know, true crimes. And, right, right, right. Yeah. You know, people are still... <laughs> some people are on trial still for shit like that. You know what I mean? So, it's better to do it this way. Got I feel. you. Say less. Say less. Say less. Um, I was always a Wu-Tang fan, but I never knew about the Prince... Um... <laughs> I never knew that. I felt so. Well, you're young. Oh my I mean, god. You're younger. You're younger though. I oh. mean, because when that came out, I was a youngin. So I can so only I, imagine. Yeah. It's probably not even born. But yeah. just him and Jizzy even having record deals. Rizza, just Rizza even having that song because we knew who he was off top because of tapes. 
mm. tape circulated around the hood like you know like the killer tape like the killer video tape that's how tape circled around the hood like that mm. and um we knew who they were all in the governor crew dirty wasn't even rhyming then dirty was uh, a beatbox and uh, he had this dance called the funky a song he in both their videos just and Rizza, but you don't get to see the funky A song until the Come Do Me video with Jizza. Mm. Anyway, when Rizza came out with that song, it was it wasn't what we were used to hearing from Rizza. Right. But we knew in that era that's what it was. This was the era prior to Big Daddy Kane and and all these brothers coming in with the we gonna talk to the women. Mm. Kind right. of thing. You know, everybody was, you know, trying to finesse the father MC, you know what I mean? And um, they put Rizza in that vein. Even Jizza, Jizza, Jizza's debut song was "Come Do Me," a song about you know a woman <laughs> telling a, a, a woman, "Come do me, bitch, come do me." <laughs> so it, it kind of spoke to the era, but it didn't speak to who they were, right? You know, and um, the best thing that could have happened to them, I think, in that moment, and it's kind of fucked up to say, was they lost their deals. Because now they have the freedom, not just the freedom, but the knowledge of being in the business, and they can run with that. And I mean, he brought it to the forefront. We followed suit, and the rest is history. And that shit worked, yeah. Um, shit worked yeah. out at the end, you know. Um, what about that part? Like for for your storyline, um, the the part where you worked, uh, you know, you worked at a nine to five, and you mm-hmm. know, uh, how how much of that is true? That's facts. That's fact. That's what's up. Yeah, I worked at the Statue of Liberty, man. All that assistant manager shit, though, that's gas. <laughs> By the time I made assistant manager, I was already there. It was like my last year being there, and I got hurt the next day. I mean, I, I kind of got demoted back to supervisor and shit. Uh, you know, assistant manager, I wasn't ready for that. Anyway, <laughs> that was true. That's what's up. That was true. I, I really valued that job. It was the best job I ever had still, even with the rapping and the, and the, and the acting and all that. That what? was the best job I ever had. Had. What, well, what makes you say that? It taught me how to be responsible, show up for work on time, uh, um, showed me how to earn instead of instead of looking for something to be given to me. Um, and not just that, it taught me how to deal with white people somewhat because my boss, Mr. Mm-hmm. Hill, was a cool dude, but his son Brad, who was soon to take over the business, had to be a little bit more hard-ass because he was into the numbers. And if they're losing money, he has to figure out where this loss is coming from. Mm. And if you're running a business and you come downstairs and your shit isn't presentable to the people you're serving, you're going to flip out, especially when you spend money. Mm. So I didn't understand that at the time, but I understood it as I got older. And uh, I still have a great relationship with Brad, who's still at the Statue of Liberty. Nice. You know what I'm saying? You got to do things like that. That means I wasn't no asshole up there. I didn't get fired like motherfuckers be getting fired and shit. (laughs) Right. When I got hurt (laughs) on the job, the whole crutches thing, that was real. Mm. I got hurt on the job and um, I just never went back. Nigga shit, you know. Okay, I'm hurt. (laughs) Fuck it. I got a few days off and then I was like, you know what? Fuck that job. Never went back. Never got unemployment. Nothing. Man, you could have got workers comp, man, for the rest of your life. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh-huh. I know, right? The best thing to come out of that is that I left when I did go. It wasn't on bad terms. Okay. So there's a point where I can go back visit, which I did in right. the documentary. Right. Yeah. And it was a great feeling, man. It was like the place was still the way I remembered it. Mm. A few renovations here and there, but it was still the way I freaking remembered it. The crazy part about it, there was two people that still worked there. Oh, shit. One of them, one of them started because I was there when he started working. Started working there at sixteen, mm-hmm. still in high school, yeah. and he's still there. He's still there. Yo, that's gangster. Well, um, what? How did you get injured? What was the injury? Like, what happened? Um, okay. By the time, all right, I was uh driving the garbage truck, which takes these big ass dumpsters mm-hmm. to the other side of the island. We pal, once you collect all the garbage, you'd be surprised how many garbage cans is on Liberty Island. But anyway, right. <laughs> once you collect all these shits, they have to go somewhere. So we have these big giant bins we pile them into. Then there's this little golf cart mm-hmm. that pulls these big ass monstrosities. So 
on my way, pulling these big monstrosities to the other side of the island, driving it, because that's all I like to do anyway, was just drive that car. The big boss, Mr. Hill, stops me, says, Clifford, can you take these shovels over to the other side of the island? Mm. Sure, Mr. Hill, I'll do that for you. Just put them right on the back of this golf cart. So the shovels are sitting on the back of the golf cart. This golf cart doesn't have any power steering. So if you let go of the wheel, it veers off top. So I'm driving. I can hear the shovel coming up off the back of the damn thing. I go back to grab this shit, but don't take my foot off the um, the gas. Mm. And I got my foot hanging off the side of the truck. And the truck veers. And out of all the places... That thing could have went. It hit one of those poles that stick out of the ground. You know, those round shits. I don't even know what the fuck they're there for. They in every hood. Them <laughs> long poles. It, like, your ass ain't bringing no car through here, poles. Them yeah. shits. Yeah, right. They had one of the, my foot got smashed between that and the cart. Oh, shit. Damn. I never felt no pain like that before in my life, man. Yeah. And uh, my mistake was I had on 40 belows, 10 bows. Oh. <laughs> I took the motherfucker off. I should have never did that. Because once I took it off, my foot swole up like a watermelon. Uh, then I then I started going into shock. I never knew what shock felt like. I know what it is now. Now I can see how people die from that shit. Because I, I shit you not. It was uh, fall. And it, it was a little chilly, but it wasn't that cold. Right. And I mean, I was shaking uncontrollably. I couldn't stop myself from shaking. Then I just wanted to go to sleep. Oh, that's when they're like, don't go to sleep, don't go to sleep, right? That kind of shit. But you know what that is? That's your body telling you, look, it's too much pain right now. You can't take it. We have to shut down. Right. That Damn. kind of shit. Yeah, that's yeah, a different man. kind of pain. Not saying I was going to die, but I caught the chills like a motherfucker. And I was like, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, oh, to a point where I was like, I'm going. I just want to sleep. I just want to sleep. Make this shit go away. Right, right. And the way they treat us in them hospitals, man. They took me to the hospital and I sat in that hallway in pain for two more hours. No no doctor, no anesthetic, no painkiller, nothing. Oh, See, then the motherfucker crazy. gave me a pair of crutches, wrapped my shit up, gave me a pair of crutches and a prescription for some painkillers. See, that's crazy. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. I see that all the time. Anytime I'm in the hospital, it happened to my knee. She was in excruciating pain and she's screaming. In the hospital. Ah! And they just, like, they don't hear the shit. She just, they left her there for nah, hours. They don't think we feel the same kind of pain that they feel. You know? <laughs> it's crazy. We feel a different kind of pain. Oh, my God. Yeah, so, so I, I assume your shit shattered and you had to get, like, pins or something. Mm -hmm. No? I was lucky. It just broke I clean. I was lucky. It ain't breaking nothing. Oh, shit. Nothing at all. <laughs> what happened was the impact from that motherfucker, this is the reason why I shouldn't have took my shoe off. The nerves mm. in my foot got damaged. Nothing else, no broken bones, nothing. So I was lucky. But the one thing I can't do, I cannot spread my toes on my left foot. Oh, shit. At all. Foot I can move them. I can move them up and down, but I cannot spread them apart. Mm. Yikes. Right. Yeah, I'm handicapped, nigga. I'm handicapped. <laughs> Well, luckily, shit, luckily it's huh? not your hand or, I mean, I know you need your feet too, but hands, shit, you write with your hands, you you do everything yeah. with your hands. You know, I just found out one of the Yin Yang twins didn't have Yo, a full word. hand, right? <laughs> I didn't know that shit. Son, does and that... And I've been around them niggas. <laughs> oh, yeah, his whole shit is missing. His fingers. Yeah, I've been around them niggas and all that shit, never noticed that shit. Shout out to the Yin Yang twins. Yo, it's a fact. I, I noticed that I think cause somebody said it on the show and then they showed it like on in the pictures. But he do a good job of like hiding it. Cause you never see that shit. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, shout out to them, Bill, man. And the other one had palsy, I think. What? Yeah. Oh shit. I ain't know that shit. Like either. the walking shit. Like he had the walking shit. You know what I mean? You know? No. Salute to them, man. That's what I'm saying. Hip hop Fact. has no fucking boundaries at all. <laughs> Fuck y'all mean. Fact. Yeah, we be out here making it happen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Whistle while you twerk, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> what they, was they talking about? Too. He was out yeah. here getting bitches like, ah, I'm out here one thing and all. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't fuck with their music like that and shit, but that motherfucker, <laughs> that motherfucker. They had like I, three I watching... good radio hits that 
Yeah, come on, man. BT Uncut. BT Uncut. Put me up on a game like a motherfucker, boy. I'm telling you. <laughs> Real talk. The South got something to say. And they showed and proved, too. <laughs> Yo, because of that, you should be able to get a handicap parking, son. Yeah, yeah, now you got jokes and shit. No, right? legit. I get that's a fact. I should. Yo, in New York City, parking is a bitch. And. I've been trying to figure out ways how to get free parking, legit. <laughs> I, I've been trying to, like, cheat the system. And I found out that if you're, um, you know, when they when you license to marry people? I forgot. What's yeah. that called? Offici- uh, officiant. Yeah, fucking... An officiant. Oh, shit. Or whatever. Okay. If you have one of those, you can park in front of any church for free. Fuck out of here. Really? That's a fact. And you could take those courses quick, one, two, three, and get a license. So, yeah, I'm on my way, man. I'm on my <laughs> Okay, so what if you in Harlem, but the church, what if you on 125th, but the church ain't, is on 115? <laughs> you good. And there ain't no parking. No, you're you gonna good. walk from 115 up to 125th. Yo, you're good. There's a church oh. everywhere, though. There's a church you're literally right. You're right everywhere. about that. You're right. And then they You're always right. got the no no standing signs in front of churches. I never understood why you couldn't park in front of churches. Um, but now I I'm just like, okay, maybe it's because of that, like funerals, like those like hearses, maybe yeah, like, yep, shit yep. like that. I almost got a three hundred tick three hundred dollar ticket for beeping in front of a motherfucking hospital. You know that motherfucking oh. exit right there when you get off the BQE yes, to go on I Atlantic do. Avenue? Yes, that I fucking do. hospital right yes. there. Yes. Traffic backed up. I'm beeping my motherfucking horn. That cop walked over because I couldn't move. The cop walked over to my car and was like, beep that fucking horn again. And I'm going to write you a ticket. Then he pulled the shit out and showed me how much it was. 300 fucking dollars. What? But they got so signs that say don't, don't, don't beep. They usually have I signs. Seen that. I yeah. wasn't paying attention to that uh, shit. I was yeah. going to get my grill from Fulton. Nah, he was being a dickhead because I've never seen no signs right there by that by that hospital. He was absolutely being a dickhead, yeah, but he showed dickhead. me that shit, and I was like, "Yes, you have the legal right to draw. <laughs> You're right." <laughs> yes, sir. No, sir. Oh my god. Oh man. Well, uh, on a different note, uh, people in the chat has been asking like about your acting career, and obviously you was on Power. We love that shit. We like, oh yeah, meth playing like a whole different role. We got you on the lawyer shit, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, what was that compared to doing stuff like 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 Belly or you know where you're playing like a hood character or whatever the case may oh, be? Oh man, apples and oranges. Belly, I had no training mm, okay. whatsoever. It was just you know throw the camera on, let us do some hood shit. Plus the director was hood as fuck too, so that was always a plus. Hype William, shout out to him. Yeah. But. As I progressed on and the roles started getting harder, you know, people want to challenge you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, we've seen you do the thug shit. Now, what else can you do? Right. And um, I found myself lacking and uh, having anxiety attacks and shit because, um, well, according to my coach, I wasn't being honest. You know, hmm. it was like, you know, when we was taught at a young age, like, fuck it, fake it till you make it kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. In certain situations, you can't do that on screen. Mm. whatsoever you gotta be honest so my uncomfortability is going to show on screen when i don't know what i'm doing so i had to keep it a buck with myself take classes take the shit way more serious than i've ever taken it before and i haven't looked back yet i mean the roles the roles just uh keep coming you know and as far as you know playing a lawyer i've been a lawyer method man was the pro was the part i was playing Mm. that's the acting (laughs) <laughs> the lawyer really mean, nigga. Fuck y'all talking about. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's far, it's so cold though because people one, you know, uh, no one's seen me in that in that light. Two, they didn't think I could do it. Right. Not the people that hired me, but you know, people who watch. Mm-hmm. And three, people think I'm smart. I am smart, but they think I'm smarter than what I actually am. <laughs> That's dope. That's so fucking dope. Shit. Um, what is something that like they brought to your attention, like the coaches? Because you say you took classes. What's something that they brought to your attention that you thought was like, oh shit, like this may be something you learned about yourself that you didn't even know. 
that was it, just to be honest. Be honest. He said, when you have those anxiety attacks, it's because you don't know what you're doing. Mm. You're not being honest in that moment. No one's told you. It's like, if they have to tell you, then you don't know. Right. And I was like, you know what? Perfect. Um, one thing that helped me out a lot, and this was crazy, um, this is two two things that made me fall in love with the art of, especially when you're working with a great director or you know, just great people, period. Mm -hmm. I did, I was still green. I was doing a scene in Oz and the scene called for me to be in the visiting room with one of the inmates. Mm -hmm. I'm visiting him, but it's a hit on another inmate in the visiting room and I'm supposed to do the hit. All right, you got that? Right. You All right, so I'm it. sitting down in the visiting room. I'm talking to mums, matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Bless the day. Right. Talking to mums and he directs me to, grab a shank from under the table in the visiting room and go over and stab this other inmate on a visit. Right. I'm a civilian though. I'm coming in for the visit. So, you know, the first take action, we do our little dialogue. I know my, I know my lines and shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So what I do is I grab the shank from under the table. I get up, walk over, stab Lord Jamal was the person I was stabbing. As a matter of fact, I'm brand newbie. Stab him up. Bah, 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 bah. I'm thinking I killed it. I'm like, yeah. Everybody like, all right, that was good. The director was like, that was good. That was good. That was good. Mm. Uh, slow down. I was like, okay. So now we do it again and uh, same shit. Find the shank, pull that motherfucker out, go over there, except I move a little slower and I poke him a little slower. Mm. <sighs> now the director was Nucky. Nucky Thompson from uh, Boardwalk Empire, Steve Buscemi. Yes. He was the director that day, my first time meeting this guy. Love him. Mm -hmm. um, he does something that I had no idea that he did. So this is what happens. I get, I sit down. He said, he doesn't say anything to me this time at all. I'm thinking, okay, I'm just going to do this shit again. I'm going to kill it. I sit down. We go over the dialogue. It comes the time for me to reach for the shank. I go to reach for it. I can't find it. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking at, I look, cut, cut, cut. He asked the prop guy to move it on purpose uh -huh. because me to do was try to find it under the table. There's no way I'm coming in the visiting room and just taking no a shank. It. Yeah. It's, it's like, way I know where this thing is at. So for him to get what he wanted, he talked to somebody else because he couldn't get it from me. Gotcha. So he said, move the shank, make him find it. Where I fucked up at, I'm looking for the shit and I looked under the table, cut. Don't do that. <laughs> so now I, now I get it. It's like, oh, okay. Now I see what you mean. Right. And the second episode, I mean, the second thing was, uh, I did the cobbler with Adam Sandler. Everybody in this movie, basically, it's a movie about a guy who fixes shoes, mm -hmm. and for some reason, he uses a certain cobbling machine to fix shoes. And when he puts the shoes on, he turns into the person who the shoes belong to okay so he puts on my shoes he turns into a thug named ludlow that's me <laughs> right but he's still who he is yeah. he's still adam looks like me so all of us people whose shoes he's putting on we're trying to contemplate how do we act like adam sandler right. how do we act like so i sit down with my coach my coach is like well what's the story he gave him the whole story told him what it was about he says, well, why would you want to act like Adam? Well, I'm like, because he putting on my shoes and, you know, he turns into me. He was like, it sounds to me like he should be trying to act like you. Right. I was like, you know what? You're absolutely right. When he puts these shoes on, he's going to be trying to act like me, not like Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. We're all thinking, okay, when these shoes come on, and we're supposed to be Adam Sandler, but with our faces, we got to act like him. That was not the key. The key was to act like ourselves, not him. Uh -huh. But I would have never picked up on that if the coach wouldn't have put it out there like that. And I don't even think the other actors knew that. They were still wrapped up in trying to do an Adam Sandler impersonation. Uh -huh. When all they had to do was be a, a, a bad version of themselves. Gotcha. But don't you... Hmm, that's interesting. Because say like if I was that person and I put your shoes on, wouldn't my job be to be more like meth? Yeah. But he was trying Absolutely. to make a point, like be yourself. No, no, no. He's saying, like, let's say you're Adam Sandler, you're the character. Right. 
I'm I bring my shoes into you. Uh-huh. Fix these for me, Mr. Cobbler. Uh-huh. Okay, I'll fix them for you. I'm a big, I'm a high class drug dealer, whatever. I got money. You fix the shoes for me. Then you put my shoes on because they're your size. So you slide them on. When you look in the mirror, you're not you anymore. You look like me. Mm-hmm. So the switcheroo is there. It's like, oh shit, what the uh, fuck just happened? Right, right. I don't right. know. And you kick a shoe off. Now you're yourself again. So now you're like, wait a minute, is it the shoes? What, what, what the fuck is going on? So this is what's happening with Adam Sandler. So us, knowing how the movie works, we said when he puts the shoes on and he turns into us, we got to act like Adam Sandler. No. Uh, no when he no. puts those shoes on, we got to act like us because yeah. that's him correct. trying to act like us. Correct, correct, correct. Got it. <laughs> got Damn, I took, I took the long route on that. People are going to be like, what the what? fuck is that about? <laughs> what is it called? Cobbler? The Cobbler. Cobbler. A couple people in the chat were saying that they saw it. So that's dope. That's dope. Yeah, but, some people think that shit is dessert. Fuck right, wrong, right. At first, when you said it, I was like, oh, cobbler. Okay, you know what I mean? Some peach cobbler. What kind of cobbler? No, it's, it's a shoemaker. <laughs> right. I was like, oh, okay. Cool. So, I mean, personally, what was the best acting role like that you enjoyed, that you felt like, damn, this shit was the best thing I ever did? Right now, power. But okay. the most fun I've had on the set was uh, Soul Plane. <laughs> Shout out to Jesse and Yuli Torero. Shout out Kevin. Katie, Love that shit. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. My man Gary. So plain. Angel Conwell. And Sophia Vergara. Yep. So many funny people cool. on set. Right. And mm. John Witherspoon, bless the dead. I met his wife that day too. That was the chick sitting next to him. That's his wife in actual life. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Cool. He stuck his pinky in her shit. Yeah, that's yeah. his wife. <laughs> Very cool lady. Damn man, that 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 set must have been fucking funny as shit. Just Marcus. working on that. Everybody in that movie is hilarious. Fucking uh, what's her name? Monique was in that. Me, uh, yeah. Shit. Lottie Love. Mm-hmm. Um, Lottie Love. Lala. Um. D. L. Hewley. Tom Arnold. <laughs> a lot of people. The Yin Yang twins? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Full circle. Man, what's the most annoying thing? Terry Crews. Terry Crews. Terry Crews. Terry Crews is in it, too. Uh, got you know, you. Terry Crews. Big the, Terry Crews. Muscles. The, yeah, yeah. The, the white chicks. <laughs> yeah, him. He was doing the robot. <laughs> yeah. Um, In Friday. He was in Friday, too, I think. Um, yeah. What is the most annoying thing you have to deal with? Because I know I've only been in one movie and I literally only had like one minute <laughs> and I was there for like 24 hours. So imagine mm-hmm. how much time is on set for people who are actually starring in the movie. They don't do that to us. We're, we're always working. So there's no sitting around waiting for for us. You know, when they call us in... We go to hair and makeup, we go in our trailer, we get dressed, uh, we go for rehearsal, then we go, then we uh, wait to shoot. Once we start shooting, it's, it's shooting until lunch. Go to lunch, come back, you're shooting some more. But the other people, like the one or two line people, mm-hmm. they do them dirty. I, I've had that happen to me before. Gotcha. I've had that happen to me before where like... I'm sitting on set for hours <laughs> and they ain't shot shit. Yeah. Right, right. right. Yeah. My and... first acting job, believe it or not, was above the rim. Mm. You know why you ain't seen me in that motherfucker? Yeah, why? Because I left. Oh, it was too long. They did some shit like that. It was before Wu Tang. <laughs> this was before Wu Tang. We was uptown. Don't ask me why we was up there and shit. Right. And they was filming. And they was like, "You want to be an extra? Yeah, why not?" He was like, "Stand right there." And I'm standing outside the movie theater. Uh huh. When they was, when Leon and the mom come out the movie theater, I'm thinking Tupac gonna come out that motherfucker. Right. I seen Leon and the mom. No disrespect to Leon. But I was like, man, I'm getting the fuck out of here. But anyways, on it. You ain't Pac. Not left. Not <laughs> this left. ain't Pac. What the fuck? No way they got that footage. Tell them check it. <laughs> oh man, yo, th- that that's what happened to me. So, um, shout out to Rada Blank and um, uh, <laughs> yeah, shout out to Rada. She's the one who actually called me. Uh, a lot of us was in there. Um, it was called the Forty Year Old Version, 
and oh yeah, you, I heard about you, that. You saw that? Yeah. Um, it was so dope to be a part of it. So she had reached out to us because she she she's actually a fan of female battle rap, and she called yeah. some of the Queen of the Ring girls out. She was like, "Look, I just want y'all to be in this battle rap scene." You just write, you know. So we did a couple. We did like a, a battle, like a real battle. Um, mm. And I was literally there for hours. And then, like, you could tell the little assistants, they just look nervous running around. Please don't leave. Please, wait, look, you have to stay, please. I'm like, I'm, I'm going mm-hmm. to smoke. No, please, uh, they, they'll kill me if you if you don't come back. And I know, yeah, like, the PAs, yo. Man. Them got, PAs got it the worst, man, and they do get fired over shit like yeah, that. They look like it. They look like they're the lowest on the totem pole. Well, let me ask you this question: <laughs> When you were there, how many people were there? Like non act, non crew actors and extras. Was it a lot of people? Uh they uh, yeah, it was a lot of people because they were like the crowd, that's why. the crowd. And that's why. Whenever you got a lot of extras, it's going to be a long shooting scene. Mm-hmm. Most of my. Most of my scenes, I love it when it's just me and another person. Most of my scenes in the courtroom, they'll shoot all fucking day. I'm talking about I'm there from 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. to 7, 8 at night. Damn. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so it comes with the territory, but the, the, the done product is the best part of it. And for me, it's not boring because I'm always working. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always something to do. It ain't. Right. Yeah. You I love mean, you love the grind. Yeah. And I, I mean, being compensated well for it, I could imagine, you know, them checks, them acting checks, you know? It pays pretty good. Let's it pays pretty next. good. <laughs> but when I first got back into it, I mean, my lowest paying job was $600. As Method Man. Oh, like a show? Yes. No. Or like just job? Acting. Oh, your first acting job was six. Got you, got you, got you, got you. Got you. Mm-hmm. I guess is it true like you you everybody kind of starts there, like no, or, or no. Some... There's some people that get to cut the line. Uh, okay. There are some people that get to cut the line, and I wouldn't even say cut the line because they built enough of a career for themselves that they put themselves on the radar that they wouldn't even be considered. Got you. you so know? in some shape or form, yeah, it happens. Got you. Yeah. Um, for... If you knew Tyrese would be such a great actor, I mean, his music was dope, Facts. you know? Facts. But son, act. He act, act. You know what I mean? But wasn't he in the Coca-Cola commercial before he was singing? That was just singing. I ain't sure. I mean, I ain't gonna say they shit, but that ain't acting. That's, that's mm-hmm. just, you know. Like a music video. Tyrese, when he got his shot, he took full advantage of it and he made sure he was prepared. Mm. And that's all they asked. If they can trust you, they're gonna give you the money. Right. For fuck. Right, right. Right? Was Baby Boy his first role? Uh, I believe so. Maybe. I'm not sure though, but I would I would say that. Baby you know, he did have a cameo. Uh, uh, well, he did have a role in an Usher video, but that was dead. They ain't shit. Tyrese don't do. <laughs> this nigga do. Yo, Tyrese do every motherfucking thing, man. Actor singing, <laughs> rap, the oh nigga dance, the nigga, every fucking thing, man. <laughs> um. When when you usually do acting jobs, you ha- your manager has to find the audition, or they kind of like scout you like like power, right? Did Fifty Agent. call you and was like, "Yo, I want you in this in this show." Agents, agents, but right. my jobs come in different ways. Um, right. a lot of times over the years, you know, you go and audition. A lot of casting directors keep you in mind for other stuff, and they may call you mm-hmm. or call your manager. Uh, mostly, it's agents who uh, they have a put out a call, they hear about a movie and be like, I think my client would be perfect for your movie, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. They wait for a call back. If they get one, then they call you. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. And then you either have to audition, but if they really want you, you don't have to audition. It's, it's called a read. If they want you to read, that means you go up in there, you're auditioning and you're, you're doing the one, two, one, two with them. And then you go through the process everybody goes through. They look at your tape, say yay or nay, and then you move on to the next level. Yay or nay, move on to the next level. Nay, 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 gone. Mm-hmm. Somebody else gets the job. And that's how it works. Some people have auditioned five and six times for the same freaking role. I auditioned for the same show two different parts in the same day. Audition for the same show, let me get that right, for two different parts the same day. So I did the first role. I walked mm-hmm. in there. Audition for the first part, 
walked out, walked back in, <laughs> like literally walked out the door, walked back in, sat down and auditioned for the second role. Made and a whole didn't get one of them. <laughs> didn't get even one of them chicks. You know what I mean? Jeez. But they said you'll be perfect for Rodney, and they gave me my own character, Gosh. which I was cool with. Yeah, it was like, all right, cool, I'll take it. Yeah, I ain't see me to play in these, but you can give me a whole new role. Uh, and that's facts. Yeah, that's lit. I hate auditions, but they're necessary, especially if you're putting your money behind something. Mm -hmm. The longest audition, not even the worst audition I had. The worst audition I had was for Jodie Foster, and I sweated through that whole shit that I had to excuse myself. And never even finish the fucking shit. Um, what? Why? Why? I got nervous. I mean, it's Jody. And I it, fuck with Jody. Yeah, and I had an anxiety attack. Did not know what I was doing, so I left. Mm. And just you know, the fact of having her in the room that made it even hotter. Yeah, facts. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And um, when I auditioned for Keanu, that was tough because I had I think three days, mm. and it was like six scenes. Mm. We're talking almost 12 pages of dialogue, B. 12. And I had to know this shit. Had to know this shit. The reason why I'm telling you this is because when I got to the audition, mm -hmm. I walk inside, right? And I mean, you know, there's people, you're going to see people waiting at audition. You don't know if they're auditioning for the role you're auditioning for, what they're there for. You just know that you're all there for a job. Right. Now, the walls are so thin that the first person that went up there, female, you can hear Key and Peel in there laughing and all the people. There. I'm like, oh, so it's a crowded room. Mm -hmm. I hate crowded rooms. I hate when I got to audition in front of six, seven people. It feel like a play. Yeah. You know, so I hear them in there laughing. I'm like, okay, well, they in good spirits. That's good. That's good. So I'm <laughs> still going over my dialogue in my head, the whole sixth scene. I get up to the fifth scene um, and, this, and, and, you know, I, I didn't get to the sixth scene, but the fifth scene is in my head. And I'm nervous now because I didn't go over the sixth scene. They call me up in there. I walk up in there. They ask me if I like cats. I ain't got no problem with cats. All right. <laughs> All right, y'all want to start reading this shit? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? You want to start reading this shit? You know, I introduce myself around the room or whatever. Yeah, let's start reading. These motherfuckers got the nerve to pick up their scripts. I was like, oh, fuck no. Oh, they're going to read back and forth with you. Yeah, but they got to go off script. I'm uh, not allowing them to hold their paper. As much work as I had to put in to learn those six scenes, facts, facts. we all going you... off paper. <laughs> so if I fuck up, y'all going to fuck up too. Right. The beauty of it was I did not fuck up. Audition went well. I got a call back that day mm. saying I got the part. And that they're going to be shooting in New Orleans. Nice. Long story, long story longer, I get to New Orleans. And this is why I'm telling you this story. I get to New Orleans and shit. And uh, we go about first shooting day. I meet the fellas. Everything cool and shit. Uh, the 4th of July comes. Jordan has a party at his crib. We go to his crib. And me and him get to kicking it. And I'm telling him about the audition and how nervous I was. And he was like, dude, when you walked in the room, you had the fucking part. He said, when you showed up, you had the part. That shit blew my fucking mind. Wow, wow, what, what, what? They just love I'm the look. I'm wrapping my brain trying to learn these scenes and shit. And in, in his head, he had already made his decision before I even started acting. Huh. Before I even walked in the room and said my first line, he had already made his decision. Mm. And that's fucking dope right there. It was like, you wasting my motherfucking time, man. <laughs> nah, but that's dope, though. Yeah, it's dope that's because dope. I, I, I they, worked for it. And you reassured them, too. Because it's yeah. like, damn, we already knew we wanted you, and you came in super prepared. You know what I'm saying? I was ready. That makes it easier to give up that money, right? Yeah, that's a fact. It just it reassures me. It feel like when I'm hiring somebody, I'm like, I already was gonna pick you, but shit, right. got it in the bag. Shit, I yeah, take it. You know what I mean? It's reassured. See, for um, me, it feel good to get paid for shit because I do so much yeah. other shit for. Just nothing. Like, I don't ask for shit from nobody, man. I say yes before I say give me. Mm. You know? And there's a lot of situations where I'm not even comfortable, but I will show up for somebody, make sure they all right. And that's just the kind of person that I am. Do I get that back all the time? Nah. Right. Nah. Right. And, that, and that's peace because that's not the reason why I did it. Right. You know? But it always feels good to be acknowledged for doing good deeds. Facts of life. Now, um, 
any uh any acting roles in the uh, near future that we don't know about? Um, one I'm not gonna say. I'm just gonna let y'all be surprised at it the same way y'all was surprised the Godfather oh. all of them popped up on me and shit. They're like, damn, <laughs> back on all the black shows. What the fuck this nigga doing? Um, I'm about to go work on a movie with Sanaa Lathan. Ooh, Sanaa, we love Sanaa Lathan. Hey, she's dope as fuck, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it because she's directing too, you know. Um, nice. Called on the come up. Then it's about battle rap, ain't that a bitch? Oh, Got what? some battle rap elements in there, yeah. Oh shit! They were looking for the prepared. female lead. It took them a, a minute to find the female lead, so I'm guessing they found it since we're in production now. You know, mm-hmm. I was going to lay out some suggestions, but I don't want to get ahead of myself mm-hmm. because it. If I pick the wrong motherfucker, that motherfucker can't act. It's like it's on me. Uh, look, yeah, if you need some battle rap extras, I got you. I got it. It's on my resume already. You know what I'm saying? I heard you. I heard you. I'm going to keep that on deck, too. I'm going to let you know. I know. And that's oh. some real talk. No, no, ask about me. Because um, even when I did drop the mic, you know, they had certain um guys there writing. I love Ron. Ron is very clever oh, with his pen. Yeah, hell yeah. He was one of the permit, pro, you know, one of the... uh writers on the show him and mm. jensen who was the head writer they uh were friends so for me this is a lane for me to bring in some writers who i enjoy so not yeah. everybody i requested got brought in but a few did especially the ones that were on the west so blinds brought her in I was like y'all gotta get this girl she's an incredible writer bring her in blind you know what i'm talking about right oh blimey Bl- blimey yeah oh I'll fuck with blimey that's Here what we she go was back. still oh blimey yeah, fuck yeah. what have you. Um, um, I was trying to get E Heart. I was trying to get C three. But dope. they not. They, it's a coastal thing, you know. So we got they got Chilla Jones over there, and we Let's had go. Hollow a couple of times. Let's go. Hollow responsible, but and uh, awkward. Yeah, awkward. another one, you know. And but my favorite out of all of them, and he's one of my favorite battle rappers of all time. He's not the greatest though, but he's one of my favorite battle rappers of all time. A broat. Who that? He's my broat. <sighs> Carter Deems. Carter Deems. I didn't expect that one. You know what I mean? Like he fuck up a lot in his battles and shit. He be forgetting his shit, and shit like that. <laughs> but the boy is brilliant, man. Yeah, I didn't expect that one. Right? He's one of my favorites. I didn't say he was the best. Low key, nice. Right. Okay. Okay. One of my it. favorite battle rappers of all time, man. The Broke. Mm. What's this? Uh, somebody asks, you gave the best concert ever I ever seen. You were walking in the crowd grabbing blunts and shit? <laughs> said, uh, somebody I like when people interpret shit like that. Right. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> Like when they said Jesus walked on water, nigga, it was a puddle. I was there. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. No, nah, I wasn't probably. I probably did take a blunt for somebody, but I probably already had it in my hand. Right. But yeah, I stand up. I stand up. I used to do that shit. I don't do that shit no more. That shit, not in not, not in COVID. <laughs> oh hell no, nah. fuck no. Nah. <laughs> nah, but before that shit, uh... niggas we be trash and shit. But if I smell something. There have been times where I smoke some. I'm like, who in the fuck is smoking that? <laughs> On stage, we'll stop the show. Look, who in the fuck is smoking? Pass that shit, What is nigga. that? <laughs> well, let me get a hit. Then I'll take that motherfucker. He never get it back. Mm. Never get it back, but he know it. This thing, uh, somebody asked um, about, like, encountering uh, racism in, like, mainstream. Is is that something that happens all the time, or like uh, it's all pretty much good with you because you're method man? I'm on my business, but nah, people act like they scared this fucking death of me, so I don't say shit to nobody. You know, I don't, I don't engage. Mm-hmm. None of that shit. I mean, only time I've ever really had to engage somebody was on a plane, and that was more or less like some this lady kept bumping my motherfucking chair. Mm. Bumping my damn chair. Turn around, lady. Stop it. She's like, oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
We get off the plane. I'm on my way to South by Southwest. We in first class. Lady, have some fucking decorum. Right, right, right. You know, have some elegance about yourself. Right, you right. bumping my fucking chair. What's wrong with you? Grown ass woman. Act like we in first class, oh. Right? Yeah. I ain't even get to look at this lady face or whatever. So we get off the fucking plane and shit. I'm coming down the escalator. I see the lady that was bumping my chair, but she got a crowd of fucking people around her. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, who is this bitch? I'm, oh, pardon me. Who is this lady? Right, right. So I'm trying to look to see who's on the pictures that they got and shit. And I look at one of the pictures. It's Blondie, man. Deborah Harry. I don't know if you know about Deborah yeah, Harry, yeah. but yeah. Rapture. That, I'm sitting there like, oh, about, man. Uh, the old school chair, right? Yeah. They call me. And she still look great. Nice. And she still look great, right? Now, normally, now you would think that after that happened on the plane, I would go over there and be like, Blondie, I love your shit, this, that, and the third. You know, a little misunderstanding on the plane. Mm -hmm. Nah, I kept pushing. I kept it moving. I'm like, fuck it. You know what I mean? It is what it is. She ain't gonna forget who the fuck I am. Catch me though. slipping. Mm. That's just... She was wrong though. She was fucking wrong at the right. end of the day. But I love her. If she yeah. if she ever see this shit, I love her. But <laughs> yes, yeah, she, she needed to be balked on in that moment and shit. I don't give a fuck <laughs> if she was blondie, brunette. I don't give a fuck what the fuck. Curly, whoever. I fuck with her heavy. Stop. I love your music, but the fuck kick my chill. <laughs> I'm kicking my motherfucking chair around you, right? But well, um, mostly no. I mean, the racism shit that happened before music, plenty of time, you know. And there's um, the assumption of racism a lot of times, you know. I don't know. They they just pretty slick. They was pretty slick with their shit for a lot of years. Where it's like, you know, they being racist, but it's the rules. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, it's like, yeah, but they in here and they can, but it's mm. the rules. Oh, okay, I get it, I get it. You're gonna tell me it's not racist, it's the rules and shit. Right, but right. yeah, shit like that, nothing really blatant. Like, ain't nobody man enough to call me a nigga to my motherfucking face. Right. At least I don't think so. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends on, and if they do, I know them. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Nah, man, cause uh. I mean, the climate is it's a lot of tension, you know, especially, you know, the, the movement, you know, you know what's going on. It's all over social media. Not that racism is a brand new thing. It's just now people, we can see it just scrolling through through Instagram every day. Well, social media is a beautiful thing, but we've been through this. It was just that they thought we was making this shit up. Yeah. That was, that was the problem. Bam. You know? And now, even with proof, they still think we're making this shit up. <laughs> Right. You know, they got to have it's all kind of alternatives to why it's happening. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not, you know, why are they doing it? No, we have reasons of why it's happening. Well, what did they do? Right. You know, they come from those urban areas and, you know, they, they oh, do bad things. Bullshit. Oh, it's some bullshit. You know, they, I mean, we see it every day. The mug shot on the on the on the television. But and it makes it hard. Well, who is this person? They show? Is that the victim? Why is they showing the victim's mugshot? Right. That kind of shit. You right, know what I mean? Right, right. The blatant shit. And that's the only kind of racism I, I, I experience. You know, nobody ever really like, you know, you can't sit in here, nigger, and go to the back of the bus kind of shit. None of that shit right there, you know? Right. We are not. These kids ain't our grandparents, man. They'll <laughs> fuck you up, right. man. They don't say that shit. They will fuck <laughs> you right. up. In nah. front of the phone. We, we, they don't believe, we're not we're not we're not doing that peaceful shit. Not right now. Yeah. You you address me with this boys. negative shit, you're gonna get you're yeah, gonna even get the some white boys, the white boys, especially New York white boys, I'll put our white boys up against any white boys hand to hand meaning. <laughs> our white boys is built a little different. You know what I mean? <laughs> they built a little different, man. You know, some of them is racist pieces of shit, but they'll fight you. <laughs> you motherfuckers will fight you. <laughs> You know, we got some timid ass motherfuckers, but yeah, they'll fight you, especially them Italian motherfuckers. They'll fight the shit out you. Well, see, uh, uh, Italian, they like, uh, they different. They, when you, you're an immigrant, it's like a different kind of white. It's like you go through immigrant struggles. Nah, they all white. I'm sorry. <laughs> they all white people, man. It's real. It's like if they walk in the room and don't give their last name and don't say shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got people in Spain <laughs> like that too, where. They'll come to America and they just blend right the fuck in. Mm. You know? They don't have that Afro, um, Afro-Latino Afro shit. Yeah. Because if you're white, you're basically, you you're get white. the white privileges. Yeah. Period. They don't, uh, 
They don't see you different. You just I don't white. see nobody saying no, 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 no. I know I'm white, but no, I, I won't take any of that privilege today. Yeah, right. It's an assumption that you're supposed to have it. That's where the entitlement comes from. Yeah. It's not just privilege, it's entitlement. You know, it is what it is and shit. Not everyone's like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just speaking to those that if it offends you, then I mean you, motherfucker. Right, right, right. If, if, if you're mad, then I'm probably talking about you. Yeah. I'm probably talking about you. God right? Yeah. Let's go. And if you got a problem with me, that means I'm probably yours. <laughs> Let's go. Man, um, <laughs> what do you think about, like, music right now? Like, who is giving you music that you feel like is similar? Not even similar, but give you that same feel like well, what y'all was doing. You know what I mean? Yo, like, these young it? R&B chicks is murdering it right now, man. Who, who, who's out there? I mean, they popping out. The, well, I can't even give names, but I've been hearing so many great... Re- not not taking anything from the guys, but all y'all talking about is fucking. And, and, and y'all, y'all saying the same shit the rappers are saying. These females is... They balking on niggas and they getting they shit right and just I don't know man I, maybe it's just a phase I'm going through right now but I'm more partial to female R&B and soul artists more than anything else right now you know what I mean mm. Um, as far as the hip hop goes I can't keep up it's, I mean it's not for me what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna say something negative about it and shit they don't make that shit for me I right. can't say shit about it nothing at all Too and people love that shit you know right. I, I just love the fact that hip hop is in a a space now where it's like a generation from now, I'm off. That's a, another doorway to get out of a bad situation for a lot of us. Another gateway, mm-hmm. and this is something. The beauty of it is, it's something that we made ourselves. We made our own fucking job, mm-hmm. our own job, and and niggas is eating off that shit in so many different ways, man. From mixtape makers to DJs to fuck. How do you think the DJ feel? Because the DJ was the man back in the day. It wasn't nothing about the MC. Right. The MC was just there to, to bridge gaps where the DJ was putting the music on. Mm-hmm. That was it. Right. How do you think they feel? Them niggas is in the background and shit. They don't get no love. They get 40 ounces thrown at them if the record skip and shit. You ever see that shit? Biggie did that shit to Big Cap. Blessed the dad threw a whole 40 ounce, nigga. <laughs> what? That's why niggas love Big. But it was a real moment at a real time. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And that's what I love about this fucking music, man, and the genre of it. It, it took a bunch of kids to say, you know what? Fuck that. We not Pat Benatar. We not the 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 poison white snake. None of these motherfuckers. But we we got a voice too. Mm-hmm. We may not can't we can't sing like Luther Vandross or Michael Jackson and and shit like. But we got a voice too. And we this shit that we got right. We got something to say. Yeah. And if nobody else fuck with it, these niggas over here is gonna fuck with it. Yep. And look what happened. You get 10, you get fucking 100 nerds in the room, but 10 cool motherfuckers say this shit is all right. 100 motherfuckers going to follow right behind them. Facts. Uh-huh. Well, shit, when you say, uh, when you mention that, like, DJs being replaced and shit, like, uh, well, that's what I was saying. Like, DJs kind of, I could, they got it even double hard because now everything is like laptops. Like, you could go in the shit and DJ with your laptop, and it's over. You don't even, like... Yeah, we don't play that shit, though. Not at no hip-hop show. We got to hear scratches and shit like that. Well, yeah, You know, them the DJs real. that do that... Yeah. <clears throat> them DJs that do that, we bark on them niggas. And they be playing the music, and the rapper be rapping with the words. Yes. Yeah, that's like, not... Like Jada was karaoke. saying at the verses. <laughs> For real, that's karaoke, though. And, and, and real hip-hop audience don't respect that shit, man. You ain't never heard Luther come up in there and shit. And, and, and... and you know, play his record off a fucking computer and he's singing it. Mm-hmm. Even though it was before his time, but he would never do anything like that because the essence of it is the DJ and the MC. We always mm-hmm. have live DJs when we go on. They use the computers and they use the Serato. You know what I mean? Technology is a motherfucker. Use that shit, but right. use it to your advantage to the point where you're not obsolete. You're improving. Right. That's my grandbaby crying in the background and shit. Oh, how <laughs> old is the grandbabies? He's about to be five months. Five months. Beautiful things. Blessings. Mm-hmm. Blessings on blessings. Yeah, uh, Jordan. You, you've been um, married for a long time, right? Yeah, we don't be discussing that shit, though. I don't like people in my business okay. at all. Okay, okay, okay. Well, congrats so, for the babies, thank the you. family, all thank that. You. Good people shit. People are very vindictive, man. I've done well keeping right. my wife 
away from me, savage. Well, she done well herself. Man. Savage. <laughs> she, she done well herself. She's very low key and she likes it that way. So that's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. That's where it's at on the map. So yeah. uh, you did a battle with Math Hoffa. You touched yeah. a little bit on the in, in, in my side of things. Saw you yeah. in there like fuck with the woo. Get serious. I was Get like, serious. all right, let's go. Let's do this. Uh, when Math presented it to me. It was like, yeah, why not and shit. Plus, you know, I did that for the culture. I wasn't trying to. It's different when, and I'm not taking nothing away from Cassidy or Cannabis and them niggas. They got paid yeah. to do that. True. Me, it wasn't about none of I didn't get paid to be there. I was like, I'm looking out for my brother Math. Fuck it, let's do it. Mm. But I will never do it again. That shit hard as fuck. I, I, I salute <laughs> y'all, man. I salute y'all because I can't even remember the shits from 10 years ago, <laughs> let alone some new shit I wrote. So imagine, man, two-week prep sometimes? That yes. shit crazy. And Matt is trying to do that shit like three-day prep type kind of shit, you know? Oh, Word, no. but no. um, I'm glad people enjoyed it, for one. You know, um, anybody that's had anything biased to say, that's the reason why I made that opening statement about not being paid for it. I did it for the culture and shit. It wasn't... I ain't trying to snatch no food off nobody plate and shit. And mm. y'all don't do the same, even right, though there's right. room here. I've done plenty of verses for niggas in battle rap that, you know, got records out and want to, you know, do the industry thing, all love or independent, however you want to do it. But I was not trying to snatch a bone off anybody plate. Mm. It was just, uh, it was fun. It was fucking fun. I hope Mav do some more, man. Yeah, I ain't think nobody saw it like that. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, just some people thought it was dope. Shit. But there's some, you know, some people are just dumb. But um, a lot of people was hype off it, like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? They hate that shit. It's edited. So what, bitch? Shut yeah, up. So what? That shit That's is the fire. fuck up, bitch. It's fire. I said it. Shut the fuck up, bitch. So what? It's edited and taped and all that. I was fucking up all day. We had to edit that shit. <laughs> but would you do it for the check, though? Like, to the extent... No, no not at all? Even what? if I did, even if I did, RBE just presented that shit to me, too. Oh, shit. Uh, Let's Wyclef go. He, fucking Wyclef said he wanted to battle me and say, ain't battling Wyclef. Let's go. Wyclef is ill, by the way. Don't sleep on Clef. It's Yo, shit, do bro. that Very shit, Neff. Nah, I ain't doing that shit. Oh. No fucking way. No way, because then it's a circus, you dig? And then what, what What? What? transpires after that? What comes after that? A bunch of niggas that, you know, can't get a they check like, over here. So they're going to be like, okay, we're going to go over there and get that check real fast. And then what does that do? It uh waters down the art form of it. You got a bunch of niggas in there that been paving it since day one. Can't even get booked now because, you know, we got fucking... Industry. We got Jay and Jada going at it. What? I'm, I'd rather see Jay and Jada go at yeah, it. Yeah, facts. <laughs> that kind of shit. You know what I mean? So, nah, man, that, that was a lane that was built. And I love the way that it was built. It was built in the fucking record stores and branched out to a rink to fucking auditoriums and shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And halls. That shit is so dope, man. That's you got to love that progress right there. That's the real hustle. Yeah. Facts. That's what's up. Shout out to Miss Hustle, by the way. Then. Miss Hustle got a fucking butt. Hey. Get your ass up there in one of them radio stations. You see how Hustle got that buzz real fast? And everybody, yeah. all these new niggas, who that? Yo, shorty, nice. Like, nigga, that bitch been fire. What's wrong with y'all niggas? Yeah, shout out to Hustle, man. Uh, that's my homie, you know. I, I yeah. battle Hustle. Check out Miss for versus Miss Hustle, you heard? Ooh, you I'm checking out. You be beasting all motherfuckers, though. I'll be like, well, where's she gonna smack the shit out of somebody? Because that shit, yo. But then, you know what? You know, it'd be pleasant, too, because you, you can laugh at yourself. I love that. Yeah. I, I keep my composure that. though. I know I yes, never got don't. crazy with them. Nah, hell no, nah. yeah. hell no. Nah. But your back, you got that Nas back. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> don't spit that shit out. But you know, you know how Nas walk. He got that like that hunch in his back, mm -hmm. like the hood is hard. I got this monkey on my. That kind of shit, nigga. That's how you be spitting straight nigga shit. That's a fact. <laughs> that's a comment though. That's a compliment. Yeah, that's a fact. I just noticed that too. I'm like, yeah, Nas do do that shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that means you argue like a nigga too, don't you? Yeah, probably. Yeah, my girl. Yeah, yeah a lot, a lot. You know, it's it's that it's that firm that <laughs> that a lot of guys. It's called do. passion. Yeah, it's that passion, nigga. <laughs> I'll yeah. be, I'll be, you know, you know, the bully role. You gotta bully the rapper sometimes. That's how you get it. You just gotta, you gotta take over that whole 
energy. Yeah, you got to emphasize on certain shit so they, they so they can remember not only remember it but feel it the way yes, you felt when you yes, wrote it. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. But all that bumping the bump shit and all that shit, nah, I'll be. Now I try I'm not sorry. to do that that bump shit. I try not to be physical. You know, I do, I do, I get close and personal so they can feel the energy. But I try not to be physical because I know where it could go. You know, I've had incidents. We know it could go super left, you know. And at the yeah. end of the day, we're trying to make money. You know what I mean? I, but, I, I'm a little bit more sensitive because I be seeing a spit fly out of niggas' mouths and shit oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, no. We're not like, doing you know, that. My shit. G, like, yo, my nigga. And, and it's not, wasn't even that, that line wasn't even that hot that you had to get in my face like that. <laughs> we're not doing the spit flies. You know, I might have. They're going to start calling you Miss Spit. <laughs> Miss Spit the fuck. I had some uh incidents where uh I think I, I battled this girl, uh what's her name? Duchess. And uh she was like, Yo son, you spitting on me, son and I was like, Do something, say something. Oh, yeah. And then she was uh yeah. She was that that almost happened, but that was a long time ago. That's when I was being a little ratchet. But I grown up, you know what I mean? I mature and shit. That's nice. I'm just getting nice. checks now, you know? I love everybody yeah. now, you know what I mean? <laughs> I like what you just said, though. Motherfuckers should just start to battle like that if they're going to be, you know, in a nigga face and spitting on. Just, you know, get right up in his face, spit right in his face and be like, do something, say something. There you go. <laughs> now, now you know what the battle going to look like for the rest of this motherfucker, man. I like clever shit. Yeah. I like when motherfuckers get clever. You can gumball all day. I love to hit gumballs. But True. when a motherfucker get clever, like I didn't dig scheming at first, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes motherfuckers will take you all the way through Brooklyn just to get to <laughs> motherfucking Manhattan and shit. Like the toilet yeah. and when you flush you it. Like, oh, oh, the... gush, gush, gush. It has to be I done love... right. It has to be it has done to be right. Done right. I to. love real talk. I love swear to God. <laughs> I hate swear to God. I don't know why I'm doing that shit. Nah, fuck that, man. I they hate it. Going, yo, that shit be crazy sometimes. Oh, not all of them are good, but when it's good, it's real good. I like that nigga. Let's play you swear know, to God. Love. I like that nigga that be like, get him. He took me a red man shit. That nigga funny uh. as fuck. <laughs> that down south nigga, I like him. Oh, my God. I wish I knew his name. I, I like, like Reaper Rail, too. I'm trying to think. Damn, who started Swear to God? I just want to pinpoint who started that shit. But a lot of people are like, let's play Swear to God. Mm -hmm. They did it. I they did it. And I be fucking up. I buck up just like this. Okay, what this nigga gonna say? Right, 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 right. Like, oh, like, shit. like, like with Mike P and uh, Ryder, right? Oh, baby. <laughs> no, but see, I didn't know the history behind that shit. And niggas gonna blame me for not knowing the history. That's like, I don't know who fucking... Who, I only know what's in the battles, nigga. I don't know who, who doing what to who and however. And who's eyeballing who and whatever, whatever. Or if, who promiscuous. And, I don't know none of that shit. Right. So, I'm listening to the battle with those kind of ears. And I think that's why they had me there. Yeah. You know? And mm -hmm. for me... I don't know, man. Just, it was just something... Caught me with Mike P at that moment and oh shit. In God. hindsight, in hindsight, looking at it, I was super duper wrong. Yeah. And, well, and yeah. I owe Ryder an apology for that one, mm -hmm. right? I was super duper. But if I knew the history, I don't think I would have judged it wrong. Right. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. We all said that because the fact that we knew the facts, we just like, oh my God, he's, this is all a hundred percent. But we thought, we thought, I mean, we thought it would just translate. But I guess, like, being in the culture, you got to keep in mind, like, maybe you shouldn't use things that people have to know about it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. if you want to reach a broader audience, not everybody's going to know the gossip that's going around in battle rap. Exactly. And, you know? and for me, I'm sitting there like, why are you getting on this girl like that? Like, she, right. ain't, even, <laughs> she ain't even in the battle and shit. So for me, I kind of tuned all out. Like, all right. All right. <laughs> right, shit, and Mike was mad, so I'm looking at him spit. I'm like, look, crispy. I'm losing. I I missed that whole fucking moment, man. My bad as shit. Crispy. I apologize to Battle Rap. I apologize to fucking Ryder and Mike P for that matter, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because I ain't do him a service at all by doing that because that shit went on even further after that. Well, shit. I mean, he married her, so. <laughs> Love is love. Love, love is, is love, love, man. He love didn't care. He care about none of that shit. He was like, look. Love conquers all at the end of the day. He was like, fuck that battle rap shit. Love this girl. 
We gonna, we gonna make it. I, you know, my first question to him was, "You police?" I didn't know what that piece stood for. <laughs> Yo, you, you everybody uses that as an angle now. Mm -hmm. they, they, the police, they call them the, the cops, the police. Man, <laughs> when them niggas stole my car, first people I wanted to see was the police. <laughs> oh, I'm fucking with you. Oh, oh. Fucking with you. Call the phone, phone, oh. oh. Mm. So, let me see. So, in the chat, oh, actually, every time I have somebody on the show, right, I ask them uh, the 4 4 question, right? So, the 4 4 question is basically. What battle rapper you like for what reason, right? And the first one is, what battle rapper you like for laughs? Meaning they're hilarious, you love it, you could count on a good key key from this rapper. The second one is, what battle rapper you prefer for bars? They got the fire bars, you could depend on them for, for, for the bars. The uh -huh. third is, what battle rapper you like for now? Meaning they dope right now, but they probably not going to be good five years from now. They'll eventually die out. Mm. And the last one is, what battle life were you like forever? Uh, they will forever remain in your top five. All right. So the first one well, the is first for one, laughs. For laughs, man. Mm -hmm. Hollow, funniest fucking Carter Ooh. Deems. Okay. Yes. Let's I'm go. I'm just going to go there, right? Um, I love Hollow. Hollow, hilarious, though. Yeah. Uh, the second one was what? Uh, for bars. For bars? Oh, man. It's too many. God. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's too it's, many. It's, but I'm going to go with my compadre, my, my, my brother from another mother, mother from the Yak, Ill okay. Will. Ooh. You know, Ill Will, out of all his fucking rounds, I only heard maybe one or two. And that's, a, that's saying a lot that weren't up to Will standards in my in my eye. And that's probably because the competition wasn't up to par. But gotcha. I, that Will is just he a whole Will. different fucking level. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that when everybody started twerking, he stayed well. And you know what I mean by that? Yes. A lot of people twerking, man. They, they twerking and shit, man. Mm -hmm. It's like, let's twerk mm -hmm. have this shit. Right. Some was killing them with that shit until they, and he probably still is, but everybody doing it now. Yeah. You know, even the inflections and the flow and it's disgusting. The projections, the type the projections, of bars. Projections, everything and yeah. and the innuendo yes. that he uses, right? The Come idioms, on. The idioms that he always uses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Let that man live. Have his that's why Dos Effects you know, couldn't come out with their next album and do their own style because everybody had already used it. Mm. Migos, same shit. It was like, but I can't even say that they they started that because Bone Thugs was doing it before that and Twister was doing it before that. So what are we talking what about here? Fast flows? Yeah, what are we really talking about here, right? Does it belong to these niggas or... <laughs> I, like, no, I'm just saying, no, we're the shit. Original. Like, even the first nigga that you heard do it, is he the originator? You know, it's something... Like, everything is stole or copied or borrowed. Or imitated. Yeah. You know, art, in the, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's a chicken or the egg. Mm-hmm. Which can't yeah, be right. <laughs> but, but, but in my opinion, too many twerkers. What was the third one? Ill Will was the second one. Um, the said. third one is... Oh, Swave Seba, too. I'm sorry, Swave. Oh, for bars, right? Oh, God, my jeez. Seba. Nitty, oh, fuck. Oh, T shit, hum. I like Geechee. I, I mean, it could go on forever, man. Let me just leave that shit alone. I'm going with <laughs> right. Ill Will. Well, well, that's a good choice. Good choice. Good choice. Uh, the third one is, what battle rapper you like for now? Meaning, it's like some, you know, one hit wonder shit. Like, look, everybody fucking with you right now, but you ain't gonna last five years like Loaded Lux. You, you ain't gonna be legendary. Uh, shit. The boy that's uh, the boy that's about to bottle Big Tuna. Uh, Big Tuna. He been around a while though. Uh, New York cat, I think he from New York. He about to battle Tuna. Uh, oh my God. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm mad. I can't remember his name right now. Shit, he nice. That motherfucker's nah. Uh, not not easy, right? Easy to block. Yeah, easy, yeah, easy to block. Ooh, block. Kid. Block. Gotcha. I easy. like block. You know, and but I, I I'm hoping the brothers stay. 
you right, know, right, but right. you know what they say and shit. It's like it's like when you the heavyweight champ and mm. all these niggas coming for that crown, you gotta gotta stay sharp, man. And even if you sharp in this battle rap culture, sometimes you can be your sharpest, but niggas just wanna hate that night. Mm. You understand? Mm. And it's just like your none of your bars is popping. Like they didn't come there to see you kind of shit, but they really did kind of shit. But they came to see you lose. Mm. You know? Son got bars, man. Yeah, he's Son. dope, man. He's about to battle Mook on the Drake card. Yeah, yeah. 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 I heard. That's yeah. A huge you know, I opportunity. Yeah. Yes, man. And I mean oh. I wanna see him keep going. But yeah. I know how his culture work and shit, you know what I mean? I don't think he going to go away and die off. He's still going to be ripping people to shreds and shit. It's just not going to be on the scale that it is now. Yeah. There's only one way to go when you get the top of the card. When you do, when you the top fucking dog and shit, you know, in your weight class and shit. Yeah. You know? Right, right. It's yeah. just how it's just how you how you come back after that loss. Mm. You know what I mean? That's when you Ali status. I guess we'll see, we'll see. We shall I, I got see. faith in bro though. Don't get me wrong and no, shit. Yeah, I ain't saying he he gonna fall. I got good. faith in bro. Yeah, I, I, I fucking him. He's he uh, live a real life. Out of his class, I like him and real sick the most. Uh real sick is dope. Real sick. I like him. Ooh. Yeah. Fuck with him. Um, did you see the the Drake card? Like who's mm -mm. on it and stuff? Mm -mm. Um they got murder Mook versus easy to block. They got um, Surf versus Calico. Mm -hmm. So that's something they kind of brought back. Like, that That was in talks a minute ago. Well, um, we know what the conversation going to be about. Surf with the shoddy and, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Tay Rock versus Twerk. So they brought Rock in Tay Rock, twerk. Rock and Twerk. Hey, Pete, what, what, what? No. no, no. They're not the same no. team. No, 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 never. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, and then they got Rex... Uh, T Rex versus Rum Nitty. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be dope. It's gonna if be I build the prototype, if I could build a prototype battle rapper, mm -hmm. I would want him to have T Rex's confidence. That would be a, <laughs> a be right there. You gotta have T Rex's confidence. Rex. That Rex. nobody talk like Rex. Nobody. <laughs> You understand me? That's, I like I could just sit there and listen to that nigga talk all night, pop shit, whatever. Right, right. No, nope. <laughs> you know, Mook up, Mook up there too, though. Can't yes, Mookie. they want in the same too. with they shit talking. What? Boy, they can pop <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yes. ah man, so man, yeah, it's gonna be a dope card. Um, but what do you think about like industry dudes? You know, uh, obviously, sometimes we might consider you industry guy, even though you in tune and you want to, you know, you fuck with us. Um. People like Drake is getting more involved now. Like, what's mm -hmm. your opinion of that? Do you think it's like something needed? Should they kind of stay away yeah. from it? No, I think it's something needed. But as long as you guys can stay in control of it, you know. Okay. Especially if it gets to a point where it's in a, a actual boxing ring in Madison Square Garden, mm. actual boxing ring in Vegas, that kind of numbers. You know what I'm saying? And if Drake can bring that to the table, by all means, what the fuck? Right, Just don't right. get in the ring, Drake, because them niggas is waiting for you. The dudes <laughs> got bars from from when you first came out. You heard? Right, right, that right, kind right, of shit. Right, right. Straight like that. Don't do it, Drake. <laughs> don't he do won't. it. He, he Ain't won't. nobody he out there can write a verse that's going... He won't. That can't nobody write you out of that one, brother. Trust me. Yeah, that's a fact. He won't. He won't. He won't. Niggas will line up <laughs> like it's a fucking Drake RG. Pause. <laughs> Pause. Drake. <laughs> Train like a motherfucker. Nah, everybody, uh, anybody would be willing to take that battle. Just you know, obviously he's Drake. He got he fucking fans out his ass. Like everybody I respect that into boy. that shit. Regardless of how people feel about that nigga, I respect that boy. And if y'all can't respect him, at least respect his hustle. Yeah, fact. I respect him. It's been what a decade. He's released out hit after hit after hit. Countless numbers and shit, man. Boy, know what he's doing. Yeah, know what he's doing for sure. Um, and that shit. I mean, Wheezy. I mean, I thought Yo, Wheezy what? would be good off of him. Hey, let me tell you something, man. Something about Wayne and shit. You know what I love about Wayne? Yeah, what? Cause Wayne was in the stratosphere somewhere and shit, and Wayne said, "Nah, that ain't for me." And then he started doing shit, disaccording to what people thought it should be. 
Mm-hmm. And Wayne, I think Wayne is at his happiest right now. Thank because you. he care in the world. He ain't got to worry about when this is uh, Wayne is solidified right now. And all Wayne got to do is just sit back and laugh at these motherfuckers hating on him now. Mm. You know what I mean? And and the thing that I love about him is he's hopping on these records with people you would never think he'd hop on a record with. You know what I mean? He's saying he didn't have bread. Like he's he's not getting money. That's impossible. Well, because I'm like, you got Drake and Nicki alone. I thought he would be set for life. That's impossible unless he sold the rights. Yeah, then they were I, saying, oh, Jay-Z had to pay his taxes and all this no, other shit. No, damn, that's what I mean by the narrative. Wayne got in trouble with the IRS because Wayne spent a shitload of money and wasn't paying right, right, right. his share of whatever America is and shit. Okay. And Jay, being as smart as he is, Directed him to the right people that can get his finances in order. Jay ain't pay shit. Jay, <laughs> the fuck out of here, man. Jay, I'm like, come on, come on, man. <laughs> it's like you know what I mean. And but Jay is the type of person that will extend himself to a point where it's like he's not gonna give you a fish, nigga, but he'll teach he you how to. Catch you know what I'm saying? He, ain't, you know, he just put Wayne on the game. I hate the narrative. Yeah, but people. on the net, everyone in the net, you'll find. Oh, Jay paid it for him. Jay did this. Jay did that. I, I would love to be Lil Wayne broke then. <laughs> you don't want to talk shit. I love to be Lil Wayne broke. Y'all leave Weezy alone. Well, Weezy living his best motherfucking life. He ain't worried about y'all. Yeah, he happy with happy. the girl he got. I ain't never seen him so happy. I be seeing him in flicks with his like chick. That. But not only that, Wayne is rhyming again. Yes. Like, a- I heard him on some Griselda shit. I heard him on Pat Poosh. Pat Poosh! Who who deserve way more credit than what the fuck he get and true, shit. And as far as New York MCs go, he need to be in that fucking conversation. Stop fronting on my man. But with that being said, Wheezy jumped on a joint with Pat Poos. I would never think that would be a combo. Like a it fact. could happen. Of course it can happen. People run into each other and shit and styles clash and all that. But that wasn't nothing I would think of. Right. Lil Wayne. I, I wonder what Lil Wayne would sound like with Pat Poos. <laughs> you know. And you would think, since it's going to be on some, because Pap can ride any fucking beat, you would think that it's going to be on some southbound. Nah, this shit was, Wayne was in, I, I applaud excellence. I ain't no hater whatsoever. If you whack, you whack. But if you good, I'm going to let you know. Right, right, right. See, I never got to that fourth question, though. What was the fourth one? The fourth one is, uh, who is forever going to be in your top five, no matter what? Forever in my top five now. Ever. Ever, ever. You got to go back to the motherfucking uh, the essence of it and shit. You know what I mean? Lions then. Ooh. And I'm my motherfucking nigga. Luck. Loaded, beloved. <laughs> beloved. Love He's it. just an awesome person all around. So that's why he a safe choice for me. He's just an awesome guy. He just he just rapped at at the Wilder fight. He came yep. out with Wilder. It's Wilder. Yep. Yeah. And and his next battle. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he battling Lux Geechee, man. Lux is swift, so you know he he gonna prepare for that. That nigga play chess. So what do you, you know, think? What do you it. think? What do you think? You got beloved, or you got Geech? Mm. It depends on the the crowd and shit. Well, not for me. Who you in, think in my person? opinion, it's gonna be a great battle. I'm not picking neither one because Geechee one of my favorites. Geech <laughs> one of my favorites, man. And it's two different styles clashing. You understand? I just want to hear Lux talk that shit. That nigga from Mars or somewhere, man. I want to hear real. him talk that shit. And then I want to hear Geechee talk that shit. That's possible because I sat and watched battles before where I was as excited for both niggas. Where it's like, this nigga killing it. And I don't look at this other nigga like, you ain't got shit that's going to kill that. I be looking at the other nigga like, let me hear what this nigga going to say. Yeah. And then when he kill it, I'm back over here. And that's when you get your classics yes. right there. Yeah. Fuck with the audience thing, man. I'm a lot of them that. niggas come there bias any motherfucking way. Yeah, but shit. You got you got Geechee, which is probably like the number one battle rapper right now. The boy yeah. is so consistent and he yeah. battles mad often. Like he'll battle the day after and have three full rounds flawless. It's just yeah. unheard of. Like you gotta respect it. You don't even gotta be from the West. To, Coast. But but if Rum Nitty oh, does shit, the what? same shit. Yeah. Rum is the boy, you could tell that he was book smart. 
Yeah. Like certain niggas, you could look and tell that them niggas was book smart and shit. He he strikes me as one of them book smart niggas. That's a fact. He just liked to bang. Cause, <laughs> Cause he got a lot of different um, like approaches. Like certain shit, I'd be like, yo, what you was thinking about that you fucking yeah. made this shit up? What the fuck? Right. Yeah. He said run. Um, he said nose running. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, what? Come on, I'm coming down with something. Yeah. You got to be on, and, and, and that's the kind of writer I think Ill Will is also, you know what I'm saying? Like, and all these dudes, whether they like it or not, they products of them niggas from yeah. Sub-Zero, Lion's Den, oh, Early okay. Snack DVD, the J Mills, the Murder Mooks when they was babies, Sirius Jones, fuck it, Jen. <laughs> I said it, fuck it, Jen. Jen. You know what I mean? Blind Fury, even Blind Fury. Oh, it's like, you heard? It's like all that, all that and then some, man. I, I, loved it. I loved this genre so much to the point where it gave me a breath of new life, where it was like my pen game, I was more or less done with hip hop and rhyming and all that shit. And I think the first battle I seen was Mav versus, Mav versus, um, Iron Solomon. Mm. They was in the record store. Gotcha. And that shit. And I was expecting Math to, because I had seen the dough shit, man. I'm, I'm expecting Math to whoop this boy ass. <laughs> and Solomon, when he did that fucking math scheme. The little Matthew, like, little Matthew. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, this white boy ain't come to play. And that was my first time ever hearing Solomon. Been a fan ever since. Dope, dope, dope. Yeah. Man. Solomon's one of them, one of them guys, man. Hey, Ed, it been talks about him battling surf, man. I don't know what's up with that, but I, I would like to Style see that. Clash. Style clash. And the fans will, will make that a horrible battle, I oh. think. Mm. I think the fans will make it a horrible battle. Maybe. I don't know. Some You can't sleep but on the But we got to do the nothing. fucking Battle Olympics, my nigga. We got to do the Battle Olympics. They got to put up a half a million, right? And uh, we could all oh, a half a million to a million. And we could do it like this. RBE could take his fucking artist. Smack can take his motherfucking artists and motherfucking KOTD can take they motherfucking artists and Queen of the Ring and put all y'all niggas in there together and just battle that shit out like an Olympic fucking team. And whatever team win, they get that bread. Shit, I wish and it's only like five, that. five on each team. Five motherfuckers on each team. Start the conversation, see what happens. I bet you we can get that money. That's a fact. Because the pay per view. Alone is going to rake in three times that, three times that, and not to not to mention the ticket sales to get in the fucking event. Right. Let's go, Drake. Right. Let's yeah. go, Drake. Because yeah, yeah. not even not to mention like even like them don't flop, don't flop from from uh, the UK. Oh yeah, don't flop. Don't do right. be doing their right. thing. Uh, Shoddy right. horror, that boy different. Yeah. Good. Right. Imagine right. Like that'll be some real Olympics. You know what I'm saying? Like coming from different. Uh, you know. Continent. Well, like, then you can make it an international correct. thing later on, but let's start here. I want to see that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because they throw subliminals. The little league owners be throwing subliminals back and forth. Well, Trav, not so much. They, Trav is cool. Uh, you know, they, Trav, they Trav, Trav Trav. He, he, he be trying to be cool about anything and shit, and I get it and shit. Mm -hmm. you know? I love that guy. He's so cool. Um, but yeah, man, dudes be throwing shots, man. I don't give a fuck if they bring back grind time just for a fucking <laughs> let Boy, let man. lush let lush one take care of that shit. Rob anybody? Po shit. Poison <laughs> pen, bring poison yeah. pen to run it. Hell yeah, poison shit. pen still here, man. Fuck it, man. Dedicate that shit to motherfucking pumpkin head or something, man. Nah, for you real. Know? Let's go, Smack. What we doing, y'all? Let's go, Drake. Put that niggas, together. Niggas, niggas get the million dollars in the PH award. You heard? What? Let's go. Split a million dollars split five ways. That's good money, baby. That's good fucking money. That's good Come money. On. But you know, Smack. But but uh, let's just say it'll be about seven fifty or five hundred after Smack get to it. You know, <laughs> hey, I need hey, that Smack right. tax. Let's go. Let's go. That Smack tax. Smack Ain't nothing wrong tax. with it. It is what it is. Now nah, that's fire though. That's fine. Yeah, and I never even heard nobody idea. really say nothing like that. I think maybe math, if anybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, math got that eye. He got that eye like that, right, that right. mental like that. Yeah. But I, I definitely love to see that shit. Let's go. Yo, math, go ahead, man. Throw that out there. They listen to you, man. You a legend. You got no battle rap. Your voice coach. is heard, like man. Nigga. Industry, nigga. That shit tastes like shit in their mouth. Industry. <laughs> <laughs> 
I the coolest industry nigga you gonna meet, That's motherfucker. A fact. That That's much. A fact. Yeah. Y'all need us in the street. Nah, so we can get y'all out the street. <laughs> we need the industry in the streets so we can get out the yeah, streets. Yeah, there you go. They are. They are. And they, they're just bleeding us dry too, man. <sighs> Young and impressionable minds, you heard? Struggle. Yeah, so yeah. the 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 show's called My Dumb Advice, but it's code for the greatest advice ever. Got so you. if there was a piece of dumb advice that you could offer anybody that you lived by and you've applied it to your life, what would that be? Mm. 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 Shit. Don't hit Africans in the head with your fist. What? <laughs> That's not what I thought you was gonna say. Right? Oh. That was red as fuck. Yeah, it's hard as fuck, man. You Tell don't me them. about this, please. You don't hit them in the head. You break your whole motherfucking head. In African what in African head. did you punch in the head, <laughs> and why? That's just a rumor. I was thinking of random shit. <laughs> it's the rumor. They do got hard heads though. My brothers, my brothers. Look. Um, I don't know, man. Like my my credo is um fuck. I don't know, man. I don't fuck with me. I don't fuck with you. I don't know. I just mind mind the business that pay you. You know something, man. Don't eat the yellow snow. <laughs> I'm dead. Why? You know what I'm saying? Don't eat the Lincoln yellow shit. <laughs> right. And it's okay. It's cool to cross on yellow in okay. New York. <laughs> it's cool. It's all right. You can cross oh, on that man. yellow. You can, you can. It's cool to take that yellow light when you're in the whip, too, and you're on your way to get somewhere and you're in a rush. It's cool. Take that yellow light. <laughs> okay. 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 I live uh, by that. <laughs> All right, all right. Let's take it. Let's write that down, y'all. Make sure you hold that. Write that down. Um, they said. Uh, so this is questions specifically taken from the chat by the chat, right? So it yeah. said, "What advice would you give your child if they wanted to be a battle rapper?" <laughs> you better be nice, nigga. <laughs> you better be nice. <laughs> you better be nice. You gotta sink or swim, nigga. Back. Sink or swim, cause somebody take you out to that deep end and drop you, you gonna live? Better be prepared for that smoke. <laughs> you better be prepared for that smoke. My kids can do anything they want a motherfucking do. I would never discourage them unless it was something illegal and stupid. That's or, or unless they or like, you know, I wanna be a clown in the circus. Fuck out of here. <laughs> and if they still wanna do it when they are an adult, they better be the best fucking clown in that right, fucking right, right. <laughs> Or snake charmer. Like, nigga, what you mean, man? The innuendo of it. Like, the fuck you mean? No, that's not a job. Or a barber. No disrespect to barbers. Mm -hmm. But when you're young and shit and your ambition is to just be a barber. Right. I mean, like... not own the barbershop? Right, 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 right. right. The barber? It's like, all right. It should be, yeah, a, a, you know, extracurricular, you know? Just right. on top, like an extra skill. Right. Extra skills. The funny shit is that was a trade. That was a trade at yeah, a time. I think it still is. I don't think so. I, no. I think it's more superficial than that. I don't think it's a trade anymore. Ain't no union for barbers, is it? Nah, not that I know of. You ever heard them niggas going on strike? Never. Never, never. Ever. Ever. Never, never. Never, never. never. Alright, right, cool. Next question. Um, what do you consider to be your uh, best acting performance? I think. I that. Oh, it hasn't happened yet. It's um, it's coming. It's coming. I'll let you know. You know, I gotta hear from other people. Gotcha. Because in my in my opinion, I I've, I always feel like there's room for improvement. Soon come, y'all. Soon come. He's still still getting better. Um. What uh what battle do you feel like you need to see uh, when it's all said and done? That fucking Battle Olympics right there. Battle bunch, Olympics. Let's go. A bunch of fucking leagues going against each other for that million. Okay, okay. All right. 
Okay. Are you going to tour with Red Man or Wu Tang or Wu Tang? Um, a lot of people do that too. I'll be doing it sometimes. The Wu Tang. Right. I just um, I don't know why I fucked that up. <laughs> um shit. Um oh, matter of fact, I do want to see a battle. Remember that nigga said you mad cause I'm styling on you. Plus I the see the No, yeah, I want them two niggas to battle again. No punches stone this time. <laughs> Let them do battle. Let's see that one. Cause That's I'm stabbed. crazy. Where Plus are the they now? Is a word. He really had the cow on him too. You see it. Yeah, he did. Yeah. It's fucking crazy, man. <laughs> I hope, okay, real, go, go I hope he's okay, man. I hope he's okay. There was rumors about him, like, um, yeah. Hope he's yeah. good. Hope he's they need good. to do a where are they now? Right. Certain niggas is shit. Find these niggas. Sheesh. Bring them back, niggas be man. Finding these white people that say nigga <laughs> in, in Walmart. Be like, oh, give us five minutes. We'll find out where they work, where they live, what they do for a living. All the the kids, what school Facebook. they go to, all that shit. Track their asses right now. <laughs> Facts. I remember uh, when uh, Avocado, his boy, he said some 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 racist shit. They found out where he worked. They found out yeah. he was a teacher. What school he worked at? Oh man, I'm surprised if Undefeated. he even still got a job right there. Undefeated. So the internet. Oh beat. yeah, shout out to Real Deal. <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh, yeah, opened man. my eyes a lot about teachers and things of that shit, man. That, he's a real like he, he's real deal, not just in name for yeah. real. True, and he's right now fighting. Uh, injustice against uh, medical malpractice for his exactly. father. Yes. So yes, that's super dope, man. He's really going yeah. hard and he's made some progress. So shout out the real deal for real. You gotta send me another one of them t-shirts, man. That shit came in this house. I don't know what happened to that motherfucking t-shirt, bro. <laughs> shit never made it. It got to my crib, but then when we was in, when I was in the crib, I set it down somewhere. My wife be cleaning shit. She be cleaning, cleaning shit. <laughs> And I never see my shit again. <laughs> she that like, what's, what is this shirt? <laughs> she hit it. I'm throwing my shit away. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, so I we talking a lot about this Drake card, Drake card, Drake card. If we had a meth card, what would that look like? A meth card? Yep. Battle Olympics, nigga. Battle Olympics. I, tell, I ain't got a million to spare like that. Fuck that. So give me your five. that shit is over, I want my shit back. Who's your five? Who's your five that you take with you anywhere? And let's go. This is my team. Start five. A little bit more old. My my dudes are a little bit more older. I mean, my dudes. Lux. I feel like it's older. My top five. Yeah, I got Lux. Yep. I'm gonna put Moo. Moo. LL. Yep. Now, matter of fact, fuck that. Scratch all that. Put Team Homie in there. The whole Team Homie. Yeah, we will put Team Homie in there. Okay, respect. Respect. Hami. Team Hami. Shout out to Sway Sever. I love Sway. Hami. Swave. Um, <laughs> somebody asked the question, why did you have your ass out in power? <laughs> it's called acting. It's my called ass was acting, acting too, motherfucker. People. I was acking my ass off. How <laughs> mature are you? How old are you? You have asked that question. How fucking old are you? Right. That's all you got out of that scene was my ass? So whoever asked the question, how old are you? All right? Why did right. you ask this question? <laughs> like, what, what? Like, that's all you got out of that scene was seeing my ass? I guess, man. Maybe they liked it too much. Who knows? My ass looks horrible. I got a horrible ass. It's all good, though. All right. No more ass. No more ass. No more ass. <laughs> all right. All right. Um... Are you going to be on another season of Teenage Bounty Hunters? No, nah, they they're not bringing it back. Okay. Go, go. I wish they were, but nope, they're not. Got you. That's not coming back, y'all, unfortunately. All right. Well, they said salute to you and your wife for staying together. That was a, just a comment from the um from the chat. Fuck you. <laughs> Uh, you can't congratulate somebody on doing something they posted. Now nah, I'm playing. <laughs> like, yeah, nah, up. man. Believe it or not, man, that's what's up. You know, that's a good thing. That's a no, good it's thing. Good. It's definitely good. Yeah. Uh, um, and this question is: How do you feel about Dave East acting as you? Do you feel that was the right actor to play the role? I picked him. Oh shit! So well, rather Chris, Chris, Chris Robinson brought him in. Uh huh. And there were two audition tapes. This other dude and Dave. Dope. I didn't even look at Dave audition tape. I said, Dave East. 
That's what's up. I See, I didn't know yeah. that. That's good. That's cool. That's yeah, cool. I pick him. Hell yeah. I want to get that nigga the job. Right. No fuck. Mm-hmm. Get from where I'm from. Get That's from where I'm from. Give Dave the job. Shout out to Dave East, man. He be showing love too. Yeah. Um, well, East be everywhere, man. It's like you see him in Harlem one day. Next day, that nigga in Costa Rica. <laughs> then he in Budapest. Dave, Dave, go. Dave living his best fucking life. That's what's up. But who was the other guy? Was he a random guy? Was he a star? Was he an actor? Was he a rapper? I can't give out that info, but he didn't get the part. Damn. He definitely didn't get the part. <laughs> well, sorry, buddy. Next time. Next time. Yeah. Next time. All right, cool. What is the, the best place you've ever been in life? If you ever been on vacay, what island, what country, where was it at? Oh, I thought you meant the state of mind because I was going to say happy. Well, me, I hope we all I, we would all like to be happy. But like in a like your favorite place to be. Um, toilet. <laughs> Yo, I love your answers, by the way. Just saying, I'd be like, ah, right, he gonna say Costa Rica. The no, that's toilet. my favorite spot. Afro. I wrote some I of the, the most the- fire shit on the toilet. Oh, you know no man? pun intended. Exactly. No I'll be pun intended. Fire shit in there. The acoustics is dope. The beat be coming off the walls and shit. And I got the heated toilet with the heated floor with the with the water that shoot. No, like that. My shit. Oh, you got the bidet? Like what? Let's go. Like them shit. There ain't Team no bidet. bidet. It's the whole toilet. The toilet, it shoot air. It shoot water. It do everything for you. The what? toilet. That, I, I went to Vegas, and them toilets do everything. I was like, I want one of those. And went and got one. Yeah. Yo, babe, write that on the list. We need we need something better than a bidet. It gotta be the one that meth got. <laughs> Yo, the shit, the shit, the shit shoot water like the shoot. The shit is shoot as long as you want that motherfucker on, my nigga. You shit that water and have water cleaning your shit at the same motherfucking time. This I love is beautiful. It. Yo, the bidet. Yo, them shits is the best shit I ever had in life. Yo. I don't fuck with them bidets, b. Yo, but my toilet, this- I fuck with that. It's the same thing. It's what you're talking about. It is about. not. Toilets that shoot up water is a bidet. That ain't for sitting on. <laughs> what? I don't know what nobody tell me. This shit is water fountains for midgets. No. Let me tell you something. No, it's not. That thing stick out too far. Where you going to sit to that? <laughs> I'm telling you, that's for the wee ciphers. That's for the wisdoms, the, the chicks. And they can, <laughs> if the box. Well, I mean, it feels nice, but but that's why it's know. great. <laughs> but, but I wouldn't they... know, but that motherfucker in there, that bathroom back there, that motherfucker is dope. You got to post a picture of that shit, because I'm pretty sure it's a bidet. As soon as I walk in the bathroom, that bitch open up like, ah. <laughs> All right, you are some other shit. Word is born. As soon as wel- I walk in, that you to the bathroom. Open, like, uh, you know what? Fuck this. Fuck this. Welcome, fuck this. method man. Welcome. <laughs> Let's go. We're going to get the exclusive toilets. You don't want this shit turned around. Okay. Come on, screen. Okay. Come on, screen. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Tell them stop playing with me. Oh, shit. Let's go. What? Let's get it. (laughs) Don't stop playing with me, man. You get too much toilet money. Yo, babe, I want that. that. Let's get it. I need that right now. Shopping list. Let's go. Hey, Siri. (laughs) Add toilet bowl to the checklist. (laughs) All right. I've added it to remind you. Thank you. (laughs) Sure did add it. That's hilarious. I love Siri. Nah, but that, that shit is fire. Especially if you're, like, drunk or, like, tired or anything. This shit automatically moves. I love it. Bruh, I'm so happy. Those early mornings when I got to be the set at 6 a.m. and I'm up at 5 and it's freezing in this bitch. And then you Ooh, got the right heated. Right in that you, bathroom. You got heated the heated. Floor. <laughs> you heard? Heated floor. Sit on the toilet nice and heated. You know? Keep the Versace robe on. Nice. Because ain't you nothing worse than the cold ass floor when you out the shower too. And you wet. Don't put you on the game. This is what you can do, but I wouldn't recommend it all the time. Uh-huh. Two things. One, if you got one, blow dry it. 
Okay. Uh, keep you warm in the motherfucker, man. After a while, the whole bathroom get hot. <laughs> you know? But the, the blow dry ain't gonna last that long. I'm gonna tell you right. that much. <laughs> or you can go the other route, turn the shower on, hot. And let it steam up. And let it steam up. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. Get that steam. <laughs> I'm sorry. Get it steamy. <laughs> go to interview. <laughs> we talking about um, toilets, I, I, just toilets. Yeah. <laughs> but um, all right. So with that being said, we gonna love these toilets. Everybody, put that on your shopping list. If you don't got one, you didn't make it. All right, you didn't make it if you ain't got one. <laughs> it's a great investment. Trust me, you'll love yourself for it. So what does something like that cost you, like? In the tens thousands or below or more, twenty. It's more than you think, but less than you think. Huh. It's more than you think, but less than you think. Thirty. If it's thirty thousand, I'm just definitely not what? getting. No, it. you're I'm not paying that much for no freaking toilet. Right here. No. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe ten I grand. High four figures. Four figures. Four figures, yeah. Okay, I can do that. That's attainable. Yeah. I can do that. Mid, mid to high four figures, depending on what kind you want. Or you can go with the low four figures, and that shit'll have a little person in there just spit up your ass. <laughs> when you press the button, this shit, he be in there like. <laughs> <laughs> Did he blow his shit? <laughs> Fucking little midget person in the toilet. <laughs> Yo, we getting that. Midget. Like, I'm not even playing. I'm getting. I'm getting one. I'm getting one. That's what I want right. for my birthday. Hey, guys, y'all can cash at me and contribute to my toilet fund. All right? <laughs> Miss that fit on the cash app. Hold right. me down. Oh, shit. Hold me down on the chat. <laughs> so, all right. If, uh, so, as far as, like, podcasts go, you, why, why don't you and, like, y'all should have a podcast or something. Did you ever consider it? Um... Well, for one, podcast is too damn long. We've been on here for three hours. Now I'm playing with you. Um, oh, like three? No, nah, two. <laughs> but who's counting? But look, <laughs> I got I got a Marvel Method podcast, right? With Marvel Comics, and for, um, for I get on. Yeah, and I get on there and with um, different people from music to movies to whatever they are. Just just so you know, I, I interviewed Killer Mike. I interviewed Michelle Rodriguez. Yeah. I interviewed Joe. I want to say it's not Mangiello. You, you'll know him if you if you. That's that's my guy right there. He plays Deathstroke and shit and a few other things. One of my okay. favorite shows, Blood. He played on that too. Um, and a few people. But the catch to it is, we bring these artists on and we interview them about books that they um like certain issues that they love in Marvel Comics, and then we surprise them with bringing on the writer of the book. And then they can interview the writer. So it's a pretty cool concept, man. Dope. Where, where can we catch that at? Pandora. Pandora. Yeah. So it's called Marvel? Method. Marvel Method. Mm-hmm. Yo, make sure y'all check that out. Marvel Method is on Pandora. I didn't know Pandora had its own, like, podcast and shit. Well, I didn't either. Uh. But um, I guess they do. Dope. That's Yo, fine. Was it Spotify? Man, I ain't no fucking Spotify. It's Pandora. Yeah, Pandora. I think it's Pandora. It might be, unless it's available on Pandora and other stuff, too. Yeah, we go through Sirius, though. Sirius. Okay. Uh, Sirius. Yeah. Copy. I definitely tune into that. That's dope. All right, All right. cool. So, um, as far as the the show... It, do you know how long it's gonna last? The show, the, um, the the Wu Tang joint, is it season two and does it keep going? Well, I like to think five seasons is perfect. Ooh, let's go five. Five, five, five. seasons, perfect and ideal. Way to look at it is, I say we get another season. Okay. And maybe a fourth, depending on the way the. Uh, Cause that diversity wheel is wearing out. Mm. We didn't get we didn't get enough people in fast enough and shit. Cause remember when everybody was like, everything gonna be black. We're gonna have more diversity and mm -hmm. you know we're gonna hire more minorities and you know we're gonna see you in front of the camera and then back of the camera. Mm -hmm. That shit fizzling out real quick, ain't it? 
<laughs> Rip it out real motherfucking quick. Thank goodness for a Courtney Kemp, a Ava DuVernay, a uh, Chandra Rhimes. You know, people that are giving us jobs, man. Right, 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 right. Now, uh, uh, do you get a percentage of that um of that show? Like uh, some kind of like Marvel Methods? The what show? No, the uh, the Wu Tang joint. Um, of course they have to pay us for our story. Mm -hmm. um, and being that we're a group, yeah, they pay us. Gotcha. I believe they pay. So they they have to pay you every time it airs. Yeah, pretty much. That's what's up. Yes. Fire. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Pay me for my damn stories. I'm trying to get to where you at. Is there any advice you can offer a young lad like myself trying to get in where I fit in, trying to get these toilets, and trying to just <laughs> do my thing? You know, I'm trying. I'm working hard. You know what I mean? I'm just, I, I, well, I never stop grinding. You're definitely on the right track. You know, you're creating your own jobs. And um, just uh, be smart about your next moves. Make it your best move. And uh, when that door opens, think Tyrese. Because once that door opens for Tyrese, that motherfucker ain't look back. How you go from a Coca-Cola commercial to making over 10 to 15 million a movie? That you got your own Starbucks in your crib and you a kid from Watts. Salute to you, Tyrese. Salute to Tyrese. He was on the bus like, hey. Get Eminem sad, boy. Lose yourself. Yeah. In the moment. You better own it. Fact, fact, fact. Never let it go. Mm -hmm. You only get one shot. Do not miss your chance to blow. The opportunity knocks only only one time. Right, 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 right. Well, opportunity locks once in a lifetime. And not for me a few times, but... <laughs> but I mean, shit. At the end of the day, yeah, you do have to seize the moment. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times things just come randomly and you just got to know, yo... I might not get no more opportunities like this. I just got to take it. That's it. Run with it. Let's go. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you don't want to take it till you make it because when it's time to make it, you're going to have no foundation to stand on It's fake. Yeah, what's up with that fake it till you make it shit? I mean, I've heard that since I was a little kid. Yo, fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. And The, the living embodiment of that is IG. Yeah, because people only see the highlights, right? You only oh, see the highlights club room a lot of people in there I, I i don't understand the concept of it i love that people are finding different ways to communicate and build on things but mm -hmm. where where do we go from there right it's weird know. uh did you see the whistleblower from facebook on the news that she exposed all the negative effects that it is proven that social media and facebook has yet they oh, have oh. done nothing to stop it on who? Um, on Facebook. Uh, she used to work for the Facebook company, and the company has raw data that proves, hey, social media is affecting our democracy. It is weakening our democracy. It is affecting children. Is it? A, it's affecting the way we think, the way we live, and they're doing absolutely nothing about it. And her conversation and what she explained to Congress was, Look, when we found out tobacco was killing us, we did something about it. When we found out, uh, you know, the, the long-term effects of a lot of things, we figured it out and we stopped it. But with social media, we're actually just feeding it and making it more bigger instead of stopping it? it. Who's feeding it? I mean, we got new social media outlets every day. Snapchat, TikTok. I get Instagram. that, but who's feeding, these, who's feeding these outlets? Well, I mean, the people, obviously. We, we okay, keep it so going. who are we going to place the blame on? Are we going to place the blame on the people who gave them the outlet or the way they use it? Uh, I mean, in some shape or form, they're putting it there, though. Because if they didn't put it out, we wouldn't have anything to be on. So what would you rather they do? Say, okay, that's not nice. You said this about this person, so we're going to kick we're gonna kick you off the uh, site? No. I, I mean, I, I'm trying. There's nothing. I mean, people are who they are. Mm. And whether it's Zuckerberg or whoever owns this or Snapchat or whatever, mm -hmm. they're not telling people to do this shit. True. Right? True. True. And 
you can go, you can Google some shit and find all that shit that you find on Facebook. You can find that shit in the Google search, right? Yes. You're a racist piece of shit. You're going to find racist piece of shit shit, right? Yeah. And next time you go on Google, the first shit that's going to pop up in your shit is racist shit. Yep, absolutely. But I don't hear anybody calling out Google. So somebody says, you know what? I don't like Facebook. I don't like IG. Mm. You know what? I'm going to make it my mission to take it down, but I'm going to make sure people are with me when I do it. So first I have to come up with a lot of reasons mm. for them not to like it too my reasons why I don't like it. And all I need is for 10 of the coolest motherfuckers in the room to agree and a hundred motherfuckers is going to follow. You see where I'm going? Yeah, I mean, shit. You, you could have I'm a t- point. But she but totally it, put her whole job and life on the line. She was working it is, for them. To use it. She was. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying people should be held accountable for what they believe and what they intake in their daily life. Correct. Okay. Dude, a comment can't ruin my day. True. But, but it's, it's kids who are totally okay. affected by it. They're killing themselves over fucking comments, man. Shit is nuts. And you know what? If those people were killing themselves over comments, they was already like that. That's I'm serious. That's and I'm not saying anything about anybody's mental capacity or health or anything like that. But if you know you have a problem with certain things, yet you keep going back, getting those same results, you the crazy one. Indeed. You have a valid point. So let's make somebody the scapegoat. Let's take away something where, because regardless to how much misinformation is put out there, there's some good information too. Yeah, a lot of Uh, people make their career on social media. And a lot of people before black Twitter didn't even know how to be fucking black. (laughs) Elaborate. What does that mean? I mean, the shit that we've been offended by for years. Mm -hmm. These kids wasn't getting it. They didn't see it that way. You know, and even some some others, even the older crowd. But then you get a few people to put things into perspective from our perspective, not what the news channel says, not where we getting it through uh, this person's feet or that. It's I was saying this, that and the third. And these are things that was told to them by their mothers, whose mothers was told to them by their mothers and their mothers and mothers before them. This is where we lost our like they told they said that. White people don't have tradition. Mm. And it's hard for me to understand that because I'm like, doesn't everybody have tradition? Let me think about this. And I'm saying, what traditions do they have? I'm still looking it up. I'm still looking it up trying to figure out, you know, know. in in every sense of the word, what tradition is. You know what I mean? I mean, that's a, uh, I always felt like, uh, you know, I don't want to sound racist, but I, I always felt like that's why I never messed with like white women. Cause I felt like they lacked culture and lacked tradition mm. Mm. and I need that, you know, like I love that. Like I love have like going to my family's house and eating traditional foods that we vibe over. We sit down, we do this every year, like that family tradition we pass on. I just never found that in white women. I could be 100% wrong. But you know what? We need to find more white people. I'm pretty sure they got tradition. Maybe we're just being closed-minded. Yeah, no, I'm that's a- what I said. I could be wrong. I just don't have enough info. I'm definitely not going to generalize like that, so fuck it. But, yeah, yeah. but for us, our history gets lost in translation because we don't have any real outlets to have our information traded in our voices. And you when understand? I say white, I mean American. That's what I mean. Yeah. Not like. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, mean. mm. I know exactly what you mean, right. but there is another race, and and and, and this uh, these, these brown and black and right. brown and right. Right. you know what I mean. Right. And these are people that aren't on the spectrum as far as corporate America goes, and a lot of the information that they share amongst themselves when they're at a corporate level, we don't get. But there's levels of information that we trade amongst ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like you can make a grilled cheese sandwich with an iron. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Um, that's a, when I you mean, that's improvising. That's improvising. When you run out of deodorant, you can use baking soda. Now, some people would be like, or well, lemon. that's tedious. Lemon. Oh, lemon, right? Some people would be like, well, that's, that's not really big. To us, yes, it is. Mm-hmm. This is stuff that has been around for hundreds of years in our community. Right. So these, so so when you lean into the social media, 
And you know, you got people arguing over bullshit facts and shit. That's somebody sitting back that plant that whole shit. And they're just sitting back watching the masses argue with each other while they get richer in the process. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't necessarily mean richer as far as um, money wise, richer in power. You know, mm-hmm. it's weird and shit. Cause I mean, the, the biggest word last year in 2020, the most used word in my opinion was triggered. Triggered? Triggered. Yeah. T R I G G E R E D. Hmm. Everywhere you look, people was triggered, 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 triggered. Everything, everything, everything pissed everybody the fuck off. Why is everybody so angry? Why is everybody so angry? Because they don't like being exposed. Hmm like their secrets everybody likes their secrets and they laugh at other people's secrets when they come out but when theirs comes out it's like no don't laugh at me right you know why they feel that bad about it is because how bad they were when they hurt someone else's hmm. yeah because how much they judge other people they don't want to feel like that they and, and they're and they're gonna exactly so the same level of judgment that they gave other people mm-hmm. when the shoes on the other they expect that same shit and they don't like it yeah. Indeed. Well, at the end of the day, it's what you use the social media for. It's a tool to use it for different things. There's some people that are millionaires because of social media. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Right. Yep. And then there's the people who look to be triggered, mm-hmm. and they find you on social media. If you're looking for it, you're gonna find it. Right. Period. I mean, yeah. I think people should always don't do anything in, in excess. If you do anything in excess, I just don't think it's really good. Um, I think, uh, like, for instance, I realized it was a problem when, like, I didn't even notice my social media wasn't working until everybody was telling me, oh, my God, my shit is going. And people were losing their shit because yeah. uh, social media was down. I just don't think anybody should be that attached to something unless that's your job, right? Unless your job depends on this social media. Now you're fucked. Yep. You ain't gonna make no money. You can't feed your family. But if it's not your, tied to your job, just chill, man. You know, take take it easy. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. A lot of that shit has to do with these teens and these uh, early twenties kids. Yeah, losing their they shit. They live on that. Yeah. Like, oh my my. That's how they communicate. What am I gonna do? When was the last time you had to actually dial somebody's number? Like, do you even know anybody's number anymore? I don't. I don't. Right today. Um, I was um, I had to go get a physical for this movie I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm filling out the paper and it came the home phone number. For like a few seconds, I say about thirty seconds, I could not remember my home phone number. I could not remember it. I knew the last four. I could not remember the first, mm-hmm. the the middle three. I, I know the last four. I could not remember the first three. I had to look at my phone. <laughs> yeah, cause we don't use it. You don't use it, you lose it. Mm. It's tough. But I mean, hey, technology has some perks, has some disadvantages, but at the end of the day, just gotta... You use it. And if they do something about Facebook, what's next? What if they don't like... Let's say they don't like black Twitter. Or or they say something like, well, I believe TikTok's gotten too urban. Hmm. And then go get rid of it? We're gonna limit the amount of uh, TikToks you can put up now. Prime example. There was a time when everybody can get a license for a gun. Right. Your constitutional right to carry a gun. Black Panthers went and got guns. Mm. Next thing you know, they put federal laws up. Mm. Y'all can't do that. Only when the rabbit got the gun. Now it's y'all can't do that. Right. You know what I mean? All right, I'm Jones and Aaron shit. Hey, it's late. <laughs> I'm tired. But it I was a relax. pleasure having you on and talking and chopping it up. I really yes. appreciate you coming out, man. Everybody show Mev some love in the fucking chat. Hold it down. Uh, man, we're going to get up, though, man. I'll talk to you soon, but thanks a lot. I really appreciate it, bro. Who you got in Sue Serve Calico? <sighs> yeah, and be mindful because you're going to see both of them niggas sooner or later. Yeah, I'm going to have to call out a classic and just pull a safe one. All right? Say it like that. <laughs> Say less. Bye, Word bye, is bye. Bone. Say less. Later. Peace. Respect. Uh, Peace. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Mev holding it down. Throw some props in the chat. Let's go. Huh. Let's go, Mellow. I see you. Hey, Sugar Q, ah. what's good? Uh. 
Let's get it. Misfit Murder Ave Gang, you already know the vibes. Yeah, yeah, gang, yeah, yeah. Man, shout out to Method Man, Wu-Tang. I like, Wu yeah. I like nasty hoes. Uh, I like Woo. fucking models. Uh, I'll take fancy clothes. Hey. I lie, I lie, I lie, I lie. Nah, man, all real shit. Again, blessings to Hitman and his wifey, Cinnamon. I hope you guys are well. Um, I hope everything goes great for you. Again, shout out to Method Man. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you didn't catch the entire episode, it's going to be uploaded to my YouTube as usual. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's Miss Dot Fit. That's M S D O T F I T. And of course, subscribe to the memberships where you can get exclusive content. Um, and of course, you can get dumb advice from me. Uh, you get my personal phone number. You can ask for dumb advice on any and every situation. And sometimes it come in handy to talk to an absolute stranger about your issues. I'm just saying, sometimes you don't want to talk to your people. Sometimes you don't want to talk to your family. Sometimes you don't want people all up in your business. I mean, I'm giving you advice from my personal experiences and circumstances. Um, Follow me on all social media outlets. That's Miss.Fit1 on Twitter. Miss.Fit on Instagram. You already know the vibes. Uh, we are going to be mobbing out. Uh, who just had a battle? Uh, Cortez just battled Jada Nightwing. That should be coming out on the URL app. So look out for that. You already. Let's get it. Uh, also, make sure you check out Sweet Cakes. That's sweet like the hotel. Sweet cakes on Instagram for all your baked goods. And you know Lizzie be holding y'all down in the chat. So show the, show the love back on her side. Reciprocate and uh, show her some love. Baked goods, cakes, cupcakes, cookies, all that good shit. And Halloween is right here. Get your Halloween treats, you heard? Come on, man. I ain't got to tell you. I already know the vibes. Misfit, murder, gang. This is my dumb advice. Bow, let's get it! Hey yo, what's good? Misfit, murder, F gang. This is my dumb advice. Bow.